And here we go. I've got to remember that I don't I have a camera over there and a screen over here. Apologies to those at home. Good to start off with an apology. Welcome to another episode so of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a uh, homebrew D&D game. I uh, also got to remember the camera up there is not the one I'm looking at. I'm making all my own mistakes up front. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, GM, and uh, uh, what do, how do I want to say, techmonger for a lot of the bits and pieces that happen around the table here. Uh, I'd like to introduce my players, starting on my left. Hi, I'm Jody, and I'll be playing Clark, the half-work uh, fighter rogue. We'll see where that goes. He's a little emotional right now. So a little more tuned. rogue than he has been for yeah, a while. It's true. It's true. Next. Sorry, someone's calling me. Oh, no. I'm Marie. Uh, I play Elzara, the Wood Elf Druid, who feels really, really guilty and a little bit depressed now. So, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay. I'm Pat. I'm playing Amrin Alisar, the Wood Elf Cleric. Hey, I'm Nax. I play Zekis, half elf wizard, who is going to do investigations and stuff. And, like, what's up with Cleric? He just walked off, man. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with a little bit of a summary of what happened last week. Does someone want to give the summary? Anybody want to dive in and uh, and give that brief oh, description? Oh, overreacted. <laughs> oh, she does. So it began where the previous session had left off. You were in the council chambers, having just had some outrageous disruption, if you will, by a uh, a one uh, uh, Zuba, I believe his name was, the Could ambassador be of Fabulous awesome. disruption. It was. A, it was true. It was a fabulous disruption. And then his counterpart seemed to be taking the next step in. The counterpart of Sarazera, a very tall, somewhat menacing-looking knight of some description. Uh, at one point, someone had noticed also wearing a familiar emblem, an emblem of uh, branches that you'd seen on the Order of the Green. You'd seen it on the, uh, the armor of some of the dead knights before and also uh, noticed it on... Uh, on uh, Adrian, who works at the library. Well, there were six soldiers with her marching in towards the council chambers, and Elzera took that as a sign that you were under attack. And very quickly, it turned into a battle right near the door, never really got that far in. The council members were swept out of the room, and you proceeded to use some, some interesting tactics, including an elephant at one point. A mammoth, thank you very much. There you go, a <laughs> mammoth, pardon me. Uh, as well as uh, uh, numerous uh, attacks, until at least uh, you had uh, an interesting transformation in the middle of this battle, maybe cl closer to the end. A transformation, the first transformation of interest, was when a chain containing an amulet around Sir Zera was broken, thus revealing that Sir Zera was not, in fact, a human dressed in armor, but some strange tiger-headed being that seemed quite happy to suddenly have been released from its bounds. Uh, having been released, it promptly vanished. No one exactly knows what the connection to Awesome was there. Some of that began to be unraveled when the three remaining soldiers were questioned. One of them was unconscious, one of them had committed to surrender, and the other one was injured. The one who committed to surrender said, I will only speak if that one who is down is killed and thus kicked off a debate physical debate where people got in the way clark was ready to commit the act to ensure that this person would speak amrun said no one will die no one more will die and elzera decided that another transformation was necessary that was the transformation of clark into a little bit more innocuous a form that of a cat no when elzera is stressed she kittens. Okay. There's that a picture on the Facebook page. <laughs> I think it's on the wrong Facebook page. Damn it. <laughs> Someday I will get at least one of Elzera's animal things right. But until then... <laughs> Today is not that day. <laughs> the debate continued. The soldiers were spared. And Clark, having been returned back to his humanoid form, was distraught. Reacting by yeah. immediately returning some things that have been given to him by the others, and then fleeing off into the city. Incidentally, also where one of the soldiers had fled to and managed to make it ways and ways out. These three soldiers were taken into custody by the Reeve. The council members quickly 
convened the day's business to the council members committing to you that you would not need to make a full presentation. For you, Elzara, Alexia Ferendrol said, we will give you the ground for the grove, an old estate that had been abandoned for some time. And for you, Amrun Elazar, Alastair agreed that the transfer of the land ownership of an old inn would be given to you to fix up for your temple. We begin that night as all of you retreat back to your respective places. Amrun Elazar, where do you rest? Back at the inn. Returning back there, seeing that um, word has spread of the attack, but not long after that, also word spreads of the end of the attack. And your followers cheer you as you come in the door, including Catherine, who seems quite pleased with your performance. You end the day and go to sleep, but your dreams are tormented. You find yourself thinking it over once more, and you can feel the warm breath of that strange cat-headed being as it tears out your throat with its teeth. The dream ends, and another one begins, similar. You're running through the streets of the city, being chased by assailants you cannot see until the chant comes to you. Paluxia must die. All followers must be severed from her power. You find yourself running through streets and you see standing on a building not far away the full form of a much younger Imral Amakir. Both arms intact, him looking much, much younger, less haggard, finally until he casts some sort of spell and the skies themselves descend upon you. The dream ends. A third dream begins. This time you find yourself in the Serene Temple. In the midst of the battle as you imagined it, outside the temple where followers of Paluxia were being taken on by followers of other gods and others that were riled under the same banner, the one you had seen Emerald post, until you, like many others, are stabbed, laying there dying and hearing the crumbling sounds of rocks that you know to be the basilisks which are wandering around looking for the weakest on the battlefield. And to all around you, you can see the others turn to stone and you yourself feel that cold, withering feeling of stone transformation. A fourth dream. By now, anyone uh, outside has been knocking on your door, wondering why you keep shouting, why and why you keep uh, yelling out Paluxia's name in pain. The fourth dream is serene. It is an empty room made of stone. Before you, you can see a small trickle of water, glowing somewhat blue, iridescent almost. And across from you sits a human, Someone you've met before, but never like this. He seems substantial, and he's got a puzzled look on his face. Amrun, can you hear me? And then you recognize Damon Triesk. Can you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, oh good, it's, it's worked. I'm sorry, I uh, didn't know if this particular trick would work. It was something the scholars had developed, a, a form of communication through dreams, a way that we could transfer information and knowledge uh, without disrupting the daytime and, and hopefully providing you with... Did you hear that? And he looks off at the distance and you can hear the sound of the rabble, the force, the fight that you heard in the Serene Temple before uh, rising. I may not have that much time. It seems your sleep is already disturbed. May Paluxia guide us both. I have good news. The Serene Temple is ready for you uh, to commit it fully. It needs to be restored. It's going to take some time. Uh, but if you and some of your followers could come down, uh, we could set this place to proper rights. I've been able to instruct the Zorn as much as I can, but they're... Uh, well, they're primitive beings and don't truly understand the iconography I'm going for, or haven't really the minds to understand uh, the teachings I'm trying to espouse. 
Would that be possible? Can you come to the Serene Temple? I believe so. Ah, good, good. I had hoped this would be the case, but, uh, well, it's been some time uh, trying to get the rest in order, and I've simply come to the end of my wits. I will say, too, that I'm starting to come alive again, uh, not as you see me here. My feet have not returned to me. I'm still somewhat wondering why my ghostly form is missing uh, some of my lower half, but... Uh, that is no mind. I don't feel anything from it. But I can feel my mind restored somewhat. I have been able to walk among the maze and see the challenges that we had set out, the reminders that we had given to our students, uh, visceral and physical. It was a very good way of keeping people on track when their life was on the line. At least they perceived their life to be on the line. Most of the traps are actually quite, quite safe, which you know a few of the tricks. And we were always... Mon anyway, my point is... It's starting to come back to me, uh, the the truth and the and the delight and the wonder of Paluxia, uh, and I'm very much looking to have you as my pupil, for this full proper learning, if that's amenable to you, of course. Certainly. Ah, good, good. Uh, I fear that, I, I fear that whatever is happening to you is going to return. Uh, I wish you could have a more serene sleep, and if Paluxia could grant you that, then I would. Uh, I would hope, but uh, I feel somewhat, um, well, while the light and grace of Poluxia is, is felt in the, the works that are here and the waters that are, and he's cut off, as you see his vision sort of waft away like, uh, like smoke blown in a breeze, and suddenly crashing through into the room, you hear the sounds of the battle, uh, massive explosions are happening, you see a, a knight of Poluxia in full armor, uh, probably one of... Uh, the Knights of um, Thylestra, actually, because it has an armor and a bearing much more close to what she had done. And judging from this, if this is some historical vision you're seeing, um, this would have been, had to have been, one of the ones that was away from the temple when her temple was sacked. Mm. Um, but he backs up, uh, looks over, looks quizzically at you, and then is struck by a fireball, and your vision burns away from you slowly. The night proceeds like that, nightmare after nightmare, until you wake in your bed, sweating. Your meditations are long since forgotten. Your body feels shaking and cold, and you do not gain the benefit of a long rest. Okay. Okay. We next turn to Elzera. I, once Clark has left, and once the meeting is done, I kind of, I go to the, um, where the grove will be. Okay. Uh, I say absolutely nothing to anyone, and I just sit, uh, and I take out of my bag of holding something that I never actually took out and took a closer look at. Okay. A while ago, Clark slipped something into my bag of holding. A tree that seemed to have some sort of seed in the middle of it. A statue. Oh, a statue. Okay. Yeah. So I don't remember a tree being hit. Yeah, but. but a tree statue with some sort of seed in the middle. I'm going to take that out and won't think a lot. Okay. I think it was made of amber? I think so. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, was that found in Taraka, I believe? That was no, given. that was given by Bazo. Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. Right. It, oh, it that's was, right. It was from Bazo <laughs> given to. Uh, Gotcha, gotcha. I'd forgotten about that. It's been a little while. I know, I have too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun when you go through your inventory you go, what is I, this again? I, I kept remembering, like, after a session, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't mean to, to actually look at that. <laughs> uh, seems like an appropriate time, though, to look at that. You sit looking at the estate. It is an old estate, and it is uh, bound by very large old stone walls. The walls themselves are nearly 15 feet tall, and they look like they've been here forever. Got a very old age to them. You can see above the walls the tips of trees that are still there, but there seems to be almost a shadow or fog over the inside. You can get a sense of foreboding and something very much not right. If this is to become a grove once again, as it was supposedly in ancient times, something needs to be cleared. The air literally needs to be cleared. You pull out the small statue. It does indeed seem to have a, a uh, pit 
in the middle, uh, a, a small seed. Make a nature check. We don't to trust today. <laughs> no. <laughs> You can't identify the seed, the, the warping nature of the amber that's around it uh, makes it too difficult to make out any particular features. But it looks frozen in time. First roll of the night is a one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it's a one even. Yeah, so um, eight total. The one thing you notice as you kind of sit there and meditate on it is that it, the, the amber outside almost seems to get stickier as the day goes on. Are you spending the night there or are you going to find someplace else? Um... It's still summer, right? Yes. So I'll stay here. Okay. You sit and meditate on the way the day has gone, the trials and tribulations, the successes, and some other problems that may have been caused. And you feel yourself to be a tree. You've experienced this slightly before. The larger tree form that you've been able to take on gives you an inkling of what it must be like. The majesty, the strength, the flexibility the sense of age and almost wisdom and you feel rooted in the spot and it feels nice until you feel warmth that doesn't feel right the warmth seems to trickle up to your side trickle over to one arm and then the end of that arm feels pain you try to move and realize in this form you cannot move you are a tree you are fixed in place you have no defense as the fire roars across your outer skin, burning the bark. You can feel your innards, the normally solid sap that only is supposed to run when it's, a, when it's the time, melting and dripping down into the roots. The roots themselves holding on for what they can, but slowly losing contact with the upper branches that you realize now have been turned to ash. And you startle back to consciousness once more. You realize you've been sitting there once more staring at this the small amber tree in front of you and the large building or the large estate in front of you, the wall. It's now mid-darkness. The moons overhead to give barely any light at all. It feels a chill wind, the smell of smoke and the breeze. And then one by one each of the stars disappears. The moon of Marius, once partly occluded, now completely blacked out, seeing only a small sliver on the edge. The moon of Marina was full, but now all you see is the corona struggling to fight through blackness overhead. The smell of smoke gets thicker and thicker. That chill wind you felt before starts to grow stronger, and small bits and pieces are carried on it, small amber pieces, sparks, the leftovers of a forest on fire. And you look around to see the city around you on fire, the glow from within the estate of whatever was in there burning, releasing sounds of hissing and popping as water is boiling away that sound to you like the screams of dying trees, like nature itself being reverted back to bare stone. I slap myself to make sure I'm awake, because I'm not used to dozing off. You slap yourself and it feels soft and fuzzy, and you look down to find yourself in the form of a small dog. We don't remember changing form. Not into a dog now. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to change out of my form. Okay. You find yourself constricted. Your throat is wearing a collar. And the collar is sharp. And as you try to change form, it does not change form with you. And you find yourself choking back in your humanoid form with this collar embedded now practically in your neck. Breathing is difficult. Um, I'll... Mm. I'll try to get it off. You start scrabbling at your neck to try to pull it off. Can't get your fingers underneath the edges of it. Above you, you hear cackling and wailing. Unnatural sounds, but one that seems terribly familiar. 
and you look up to see a swirling in the clouds overhead. The stars are still so over, uh, overcome by the darkness that now takes form of a mighty woman, wings outstretched, eyes, the only thing visible on her form, everything else dark and shadow, but the eyes glistening with a silver and red color. You recognize her. The queen? The queen. Oh, shit. Um. She points downward, and lightning follows her finger straight to the collar around your neck. It burns, and you feel your whole body going stiff and rigid and falling over. The smell of smoke now coming from you. The terrible smell of burning flesh. Oh. And you wake, seated, looking at the amber statue and looking at the wall in front of you. The sun has just crested the horizon. You feel that cold dew over you and realize you've been sweating. You have no benefit of a long rest as you wake the next morning. Fun. Um... I am going to, can I make some sort of investigation role or about this statue that I'm holding? Um, some sort of role to get any information about it. You can make a religion role. Okay. As you start thinking about it going, it's got a much more iconic nature. I remember. Much better. Uh, 16. 16. Much better than a 1. <laughs> it's primitive. It's a very simple shape of a tree. But the way that it's captured the seed inside, and looking again, you can see the seed seems unharmed, preserved, protected almost. This is some sort of druidic artifact. And looking at it, it's got to be really old, but the surface now has a very tacti uh, tactic, tactic, tacky uh, surface, almost as though it is slowly melting. Um, this would have been, for whatever reason, the preser preservation of a particular seed as an icon. For what reason, you're not sure. Um, bad Forgot I had papers. <laughs> um. While you ponder that and go about your day, yeah, and presumably this is going to occupy some of your time over the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Zakis. Okay, Zakis, you return home to the library. Oh yeah. Are you just going to go directly to your studies, or I'll check in with my lady just to, you know, just do a bit of catching up. Mm -hmm. To catch up on some work I might ha I may have to do, although I'm not even sure what my position is what my position is anymore because I mean I'm doing it's more supervisory now. Okay. Um, you still have the option to directly go in and, and do some of the book reading, researching, okay. and some of the cataloging. Um, she does that herself more out of interest. Kind of the idea at your level of position is you get to cherry pick a little bit more rather nice. than having to make sure you're part of the assigned reading coming in. Okay. Unfortunately, most of the books that have come in recently, and there's some from quite far away, some that need to be translated, nothing terribly interesting strikes you. Uh, okay. Some of them are about uh, farming practices in some of the distant islands, some of them are about fishing practices, some of them are about construction practices and how they build certain buildings. There's one, one on, on ships which is kind of interesting. But it quickly kind of turns to boring as it gets very technical very quickly. The construction book, is it from the Island of Awesome by any chance? No. Okay. No. And you don't remember ever seeing anything cataloged under the uh, uh, the Isle of Awesome? That's weird. The term has come up a couple of times, but nothing seems to have been cataloged with that name. What was the name of uh, Awesome before it became Awesome? Uh, it was... Um, wow, I just drew a blank. That's terrible. <laughs> Think? Or... Uh, no, it wasn't Thunk. Okay. Um, plowshare. Okay. Right. Oh, yes, that, that definitely rings a bell. And that rings a bell as you yeah. start to think yeah. back on that. Yeah, plowshare. Look up plowshare. Okay. You start to go it. through the indexes and start to cro do the cross-referencing you normally do to find out uh, more information. Plowshare was an agricultural island, named very appropriately, had very, very fertile lands. 
uh, had a hereditary kingship for a long time. Um, produced works are you finding more references to Plowshare? It didn't seem to have a strong uh, literary bent. Uh, there were kind of uh, the the a little bit on the on the, the history of the kings and queens who would rent, run, uh, who would run the area. Very much a halfling uh, island as well for most of its history. Um, with uh, Warrens and literally there is one farming manual which is kind of interesting where they describe how they farm over their homes yeah. and they literally live far enough deep that they can actually if if they plant potatoes over their home they can actually harvest from the bottom up <laughs> nice. uh, and they makes an interesting winter crop for them yeah um, but aside from that there's not a lot of books from plowshare most of the and most of the things you're finding are you know uh, four or five page or double paged uh, uh, pamphlets Kind of someone trying to write down how they how they their harvest. One person has an interesting beekeeping thing, so he writes that down. That seems to have caught on because that's the only way you would have a copy of it. If there was probably more than one copy of something like that produced. Yeah. And uh, none of the books that just came in that you mentioned previously have any relation to Plowshare. Uh, nothing seems to stand out. No, okay. most of these seem it seems like a, a southern expedition okay. uh, down to the island of Icro. Right, I remember that one. Yeah, that was where you met uh, um, Aria? Ed no. and Aria. Uh, it not Aria, it was... Uh, um, Ayla, no. It started with an A. <laughs> Back to the notes. Binder. Yeah, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm mentioning all kinds of names. I'm forgetting all of them. That's kind of weird. Um, let's see if I can... Find I, Anya? Anya? Anya, that's... Yes, because yes. yeah, that was like a name in the... Anya and Ed. Yeah. yeah, I think when you, when you mentioned Aria, that's where my mind kind of yeah. went. <laughs> nope, that's not quite right. Must be absolutely wrong. Uh, yeah, Anya. Um, so, because there was a letter, I believe, that I currently have in my possession from Plowshare. I believe so. Hmm. Um, and that's where our buddy uh, Carrick kind of um, died, too. Yes. I still have to catch up with him. I just never mm. had the chance. Anyway. But yeah, so you start to piece some of this story together uh, over the next few days um, when you are summoned to Emerald's office, what, four I or go, five days later. I go directly. Okay. Um... Because I know how hard it is to get an audience with that guy. <laughs> and his his uh, his receptionist, his uh, assistant, is sitting outside out front once more. Tells you to sit, as you have gone through many times before. Make a perception check. How can I? you got this. <laughs> that's is that cocked? No, that's a nine. Is that perception? Yes. My notes are all over my things. Perception, and also make an insight check. We'll do those both. Perception is 11. Okay. Insight is hopefully higher. 10 plus 5, 15. 15. So you can hear the muffled sounds of voices from within uh, Emerald's office, but you can't make out much detail. You do notice, though, that the assistant out front seems somewhat disturbed. Okay. Not their usual placid, very businesslike, and possibly condescending selves. Uh, but no, looks indeed somewhat uh, genuinely uh, uh, upset and frazzled, but still perfunctorily tells you to sit down and wait. As I wait, I'll notice her different composure. Is everything okay? I can hear some uh, voices in there. It's usually not the case. Emerald has been um, indisposed for the better part of an hour. And Any particular reason why? From what I understand, he's not pleased with certain things. He was speaking to Gerbo earlier about the tower and its... Well, from what I understand, it takes a while to build and design and build a tower, especially one that's going to contain that new Watsit. Yes. And the the, uh, the Watsit is quite dangerous. Uh, apparently it's behind schedule. Well, oh. that... But Gerbo left an hour ago. What? Who's in there now? I'm not exactly sure. Kind of looking down to her papers in front of her. You can see there's actually a book that she's been reading as well. Um, picks the book up. We'll just have to wait. And you can right. see the book is, is uh, The Art of the Game. Uh, it's a, a book that you've actually you've actually seen before. It didn't really interest you. It's all about gambling. Okay. Uh, and different strategies for gambling. 
when the hour comes true. Uh, Can I recognize the voice of who he's talking to? By no, any you couldn't hear okay. it closely enough. Um, there is just simply a of the door unlocking. I believe you can go in now. Thank you. I'll walk in. Okay. The office looks as it has before. Um, you look over to see Imril sitting behind his desk, um, kind of uh, uh, turned away from the door, um, looking partially out the window behind. Um, beso- uh, beside you, you see a mage hand move over and grab a, a, a snifter and two glasses from the, 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 uh, the wall cabinet and kind of bring it over to the table. He didn't even seem to have to pay attention for that to be going on. The two are set down, the bottle opens with the mage hand once more, and two drinks are poured. Is this Come infused? in, sit, please. Thank you. Is this infused with your herbs by any chance? Uh, it's an old variety. And there's a very, very strong uh, alcohol um, kind of tastes. A little bit like um, a little bit like pine trees, oddly enough. Yeah. But the kind of the, that just that extra hint of almost a minty slash pine. Uh, taste. It's very, very strong. Make a constitution saving throw. What? But I like those things. 18 plus 1. No, plus 2, so 20. You're, you're cautious, and you sip it properly, uh, rather than throwing the thing back. You know it would have been bad to throw this back. Of course it probably would have been bad etiquette as well. It reminds you a little bit of some of the very strong stuff you've had. Uh, it doesn't hit you in the same way that, say, something from uh, from the Black Amber Brew <laughs> might. Um but it's, it's very strong, and you find this warmth kind of pushing through your body and relaxing. Okay. Uh, the mage hand pulls the glass over to uh, Imeril, and he takes a sip of it as well, um, and kind of puts the glass back down, turns to you. Yes. Well, it's a particular favorite of mine, and I haven't had it for hundreds of years. It's delicious. Very strong, but delicious. Yes, it's amazing how it might maintain its strength. How are you doing? All right. I'm feeling as I'm getting pulled in several different directions, and there's not enough time to do everything. What do you mean? It seems everywhere me and my compatriots go, something else happens, and there's all these leads I want to follow up on, and I never get around to. I see. The council was attacked. I heard about that. Any idea who that was that attacked? I'm not sure. It seemed to be Sir Zara from the Kingdom of Awesome. Mm. The knight was unusually tall. The emblem was that of the Green Guard. But once a magical amulet around its neck was shattered, it revealed itself to be uh, Rakshasa. And you note know, to the DM, you said I would be like researching that. And it I'd would be that. something that very quickly, it's a very distinct looking being. Okay. Uh, that very quickly in your research you would have found out that, that name. Okay, so let's say by the time I did, uh, before I mm-hmm. met Emerald. It's a few days research. later, so okay. yeah. Okay, cool. Which revealed to be a Rakshasa, Rakshasa ah. then disappeared. I don't tell anybody I said that, but uh, it thanked me, and I have a feeling I fucked up. Hmm, <laughs> well, it can be somewhat difficult dealing with things you don't know. Rakshasa are very dangerous, and very much hold a grudge. For many lifetimes, in fact. Very difficult. Let's hope that it's on your um, your good side. Or well, here on its good side, I suppose. If it thanked me, I suppose I... I am. Hmm. Now, who did it hold a grudge against? Well, if it was bound by the King of Awesome, as much as I despise that name, and I suspect that's one of the first places it will go. But, dangerous business, holding hmm. and molding demons to your purpose. Yes. Very I, dangerous. Uh, your assistant mentioned that the tower was behind schedule. Yes. Yes, and any any construction of a tower like that to hold them is it's tricky. Mm-hmm. I know that Gerbo's up to the task, but he's running behind. Still has some of his own things that he's trying to do. It doesn't understand the priority. It's very important we establish that protection. Did he mention? Did he mention which things? Uh, something about a, a press of some kind. And Has he made much progress? 
I don't know. It's irrelevant. I would never have agreed to that project before. It's it could provide significant revenue to the library. It's immaterial. Revenue is unnecessary. Hmm. We have a mission and we need to complete it. Yes. And the mechanical reproduction of, of words, it will lead to ruin and must never come to pass. I've told him to shelve the idea for now. Do you think he will? No, he's stubborn. I may have to take further measures. Perhaps I can convince him to temporarily stop the work on the press if he can perhaps pick it up later. It would the tower to get it Perhaps it would help to hear someone of his own level. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that would be interesting. I'll do my best. Good. You've shown some particular talent, and I appreciate that kind of talent. Well, thank you. I'd like to take on some time of yours to offer you some instruction. Really? If that would be possible. I'll make it possible. I will speak to my Lee, and some of your other duties will be alleviated. Excellent. Preparation of this. I'm going to need someone with your particular talents. When the time comes, I think. The time comes to what? Set, reset the protections on the library? Among other things. Okay. There are reasons why we are building these protections. It is the things we are going to be protected from, which are particularly problematic. Like? But if you are to be well. my agent in the world, I'll also need you to be strong enough and knowledgeable enough to deal with whatever might come your way. To avoid some of the mistakes that I have made. He kind of glances over to his missing arm. Actually, it's his right arm. Yes. Troublesome mistakes. Oh. If, pardon my abrupt questioning, but... How old are you, and how many adventures have you been on? I've always wanted to ask. Which Ages. mistakes are you referring to? Age is complicated. I think about you sometimes, and you've had thousands of years. You've had millennia to accomplish what you have compl what, you, what you have accomplished, and I have just shy of three hundred years old. Are there ways I can use to get around that limit? You may not want to. Living longer only exposes you to further grief. My age is difficult to calculate. Spending so much time in farther realms, where time does not operate in the way that we might understand it. Twelve might ring three times in a day, or never at all. Accomplishments. What have I truly accomplished? You're responsible for this great library, and I'll do anything to preserve it. Yes. This great library. Hmm. And the hand goes over. Again, him kind of lost in his own thoughts, but the hand goes over. It's weird because you've, you've used a mage hand before, but you've always kind of had to have a very conscious effort. This one seems to almost be a subconscious effort um, to once again fill both glasses. Um, the bottle now only having a small couple of fingers left in it. He takes the, the drink once more. Yes. Your studies will be important if you are to do what I need you to do. What exactly is it you need me to do? Or will that become more clear in the weeks that pass? Or days that If pass? I were to tell you, I'm sure that you would not take up the task. Challenge accepted. For now. I will tell you more as I learn more. I left more than just my arm behind, and it's taken some time to adjust. You mentioned your companions, your compatriots. Tell me about them. Amrun is a cleric of Palexia. He frowns deeply with that. Yeah, I noticed your facial reaction and <laughs> I've come into possession of a book, Sukamesh Elowen's Guide to Demons and it mentions a Pichuro, which is somehow linked to Pelexia. Is, is this the same person? There's a there's a look that shoots from him. Make an insight check. 18 plus 
five, so twenty-three. Mm. It's a, a very inside is wisdom. I yeah, trained it though. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just didn't know I trained it until I was like level nine. <laughs> <laughs> because um, bookkeeping. He, there's a sharp reaction to the name Peturo. Um, looking over to you, it's 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 a reaction which is mixed. There's definitely anger. There's also fear. One should not be so carefree with the names of demons or demon lords. They no, are it was dangerous. We've had an encounter with one of its servants on the island of Taraka. Hmm. And I suspect you will find more as his power grows and as hers grows. But in... But... Is he, or is it, and Paloxia one and the same? There was a time when I would have said yes. Now I am not so certain. Amrun brings good to the world. He heals people. He wants to help. That is legitimate. That is what he says. I just don't know if he's being manipulated by this Paloxia entity. Of course he is. He's saved our lives many times in battle. Arun is not a bad person, that I swear. No one is bad in the beginning. But as the power grows. Elzara is also a good person. We've had our disagreements, <laughs> multiple disagreements, but she that is, um, what? Miley's cousin? Yes. Mm. Yes, I've I've seen some of my relatives. It's been a long time. I believe you can trust the Emicure name. Yes, I know I can. That was Good. never even in question. Good. And Clark. Who's yes, this Clark? the half orc we've been journeying with in the recent past. Uh, I don't know what happened. He walked away after our last mission. Well, not mission. After our last battle. Was he overwhelmed by demonic forces? Unlikely. Unlikely. Well, the Rakshasa disappeared before. I, I don't think it would have possessed. I don't. I don't think it would have possessed him. He just yeah. walked away, dropped all the You must keep gifts. an eye on all of your companions. At any moment, any one of them could be turned. Even the Amakir can be turned. Turned by who? Or by other forces. Don't trust them utterly. Place your trust with care. But Clark was, he was extremely helpful to our recent missions. He seemed like a decent person. Had ties to what I suspect maybe the criminal underworld. I'm not that great socially to determine all the lengths, but that bothered he had, me less. He was resourceful. Let's just Criminals say. tend to be the craftier types and tend to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Less likely to put themselves into bad bargains. Still, they can be fooled. He had this box. A debt box, he called it. Uh, I've heard of these. I never asked him any more about it. He seemed to be reluctant to speak about it. Interesting. We will begin with some of your instruction tomorrow. Excellent. What time? What place? We will start at two in the afternoon. I am... I am having more time in the Temple of Namazani to try to continue my treatment. Is there any chance your arm will come back? There are magics for that, but I doubt it. Yeah. Let me know if there's any way I can help with that or with anything else you desire. In time, to... I have an idea. In addition, I wish you to sever all ties with the Church of Paloxia immediately. Well then, uh, what if I am unconscious and dying on the battlefield and Amrun uses Phylexia's power to heal me. Would that be breaking the 
would that be going against your wishes, or...? <laughs> if it happens to be the case that you are healed by one of them, I suppose that's not a problem. But do not seek their wisdom. I cannot trust them. Understood. In cases where it comes to me and my associates, which includes you, they cannot have anything but vengeance on their minds. And while I regret some of that, I know my position. But Arun has never seemed to be the vengeful, the vengeful, vengeful type at all. The ones that kill you quickly never are apparent. Does that mean I must sever all ties with Arun? The person, not the cleric? Yes. If you wish to remain here. The only way I can trust you is such a case. I can trust you, can I not? Yes, you can. It's going then to be Then it difficult. is done. I will see you tomorrow afternoon. I may make small talk with him, but will not listen. And Guard yourself around counsel. him. Be on guard at all times. These are dangerous times. Yes, I've gathered this much. One I had hoped I had avoided. I understand. And he kind of turns away from you, and you get the sense that you're being dismissed. Yeah. He hasn't said it such, but... I'll sadly walk away. Okay. Just like I kind of like Amarun. You know? <laughs> you go back to your office. Yeah. Try to pretend as, nothing, as if nothing had happened. Yeah. Everything's chill. Uh, Miley comes into your office, closes the door quietly behind her, turns to you. Greetings. How have things So, been? I'm to lose you in my department, am I? No. I was just given a particularly worded directive. Directive? Congratulations. You have become Emerald's student, and therefore not part of my department any longer. Oh, you're welcome whoa, to whoa, do whoa, work whoa. from time to time, but I guess you're no longer part of cataloging as such. But I was never notified of this. I was just a few moments ago. I did have a talk with em with Emeril. Good luck with that. Can't I do both? <laughs> Once Emeril has chosen you as a student, I doubt it. He's going to keep you very busy. Yes, well... Don't worry, you'll do fine. You and she walks over to your desk and kind of sits down on your desk. Look, I'm not really that angry about it. You've done tremendous work over the last few years. Thank you. And, well, it's going to be impossible to replace you. Although Alaric is looking pretty good. Alfric? Oh, him too. Yes. Alfric's... Is he okay? No, like, lasting trauma ever since being turned to stone? He has some difficulty with the index now, but yeah. I think he'll be all right eventually. I will keep popping by every now and then. I mean, this oh, is count on it. where I got my start. I'd like to hear how you're progressing, and I still need to ask you a few questions There's about some of those book. books. Yes. I would like to, get to continue researching these with you. And I don't uh, know if you'll have that much time. Oh, I'll like you in on a little secret. You say Emerald's going to keep me very busy. You were also keeping me very busy, but through magical means, I was, you know, somehow able to steal away some time to do my own studies. You have no time magic. Hmm? No, just... You remember when I first started, I was summoning unseen servants, using shortcuts like the floating disc to carry the book loads that would take me hours. Well, everybody does that, eventually. Well, eventually, but I... I How do you think I, I get so much done in a day? Yes, but... Everybody does it? What? Well, everybody learns how eventually, or they're eventually. not skilled I like to enough. Think that I, I don't think Alfred will ever understand half of those tricks, but... I do like to think I was one of the first. In any case, I should be able to find time to... You were the quickest to it. Yeah. I should... The point is, I should be able to come by and visit every now and then. Yeah, I do miss our conversations. Don't forget where you happen to start here in cataloging now that you're on in some other journey. I never will. I mean, it feels like it was just yesterday. I was being here, but it was and just yesterday. You booted my ass out of the library to go on a mission, and oh well. Now here I am. Well, one has to live with one regrets, I guess. 
If you excuse me, I have some work you to do and mentioned some reassigning of a few people. You mentioned previously that there were spells that you knew that you could potentially teach me as well. I mean, I may be Emerald's student now, but I can still be I your student I think he'll as well. teach you far more than I ever could. The telekinesis thing you did to crush some shadows one time, that, that was impressive. Yeah, I like that one. Can you teach me? I might be able to find some time. I'm going to be really busy for a little while. Oh, me too. We, we'll have to make our times go inside. Oh, well, I have to replace my assistant, but that's okay. If I hear of anybody who may potentially maybe be up to the task, or, you know, two or three people. I'll, I'll look forward you know. to your recommendations. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. And she kind of turns and... Do I still get to keep this office? We'll talk about that. If I do find someone to replace you, this is the most convenient office for collections. Yes, I suppose. And for cataloging. And she right. goes through the door, and the kind of as she's closing the door behind her, she kind of looks at you. Make an insight check. I'm looking sad, by the way. Age plus five, 13. 13? It's a weird look, and you're not really able to figure out what the look was, but there's something there. And the door closes behind her. See you next time. I'm... <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love the way. I'll try to find your replacement. I'm gonna need about three people to replace me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a Zach's thing to say. It's, it's, awesome. it's, it's very perfect. perfect. It's very I'm gonna turn now to Clark. <laughs> Clark, it was quite disturbing what happened to you in that. Yeah, time. it was terrible. Enough to run away. Enough to, to run away. Where do you go to? Um, Clark uh, uh, returns a number of items to a number of people mm -hmm. uh, over the course of the night and then uh, goes to speak to Bazo uh, is the intent Okay. Uh, before disappearing for a while. What is it you want to talk to Bazo about? Uh, he just wants to check up um, on the Marian cleric that he's requested, mm -hmm. the audience of, and to basically intone that he's off duty for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, Boz is a, raises an eyebrow at the off duty comment. Um, you realize that none of us are really off duty. We just sort of stop taking work for a little while. That. From what I hear, there's some pretty dangerous people running around. You might want to watch yourself. Just to say. Thanks. As for the cleric, that turned out to be a little harder than I expected. But I'm... I'm working on it. I need you to work faster. Oh, do you? I do. Well, I work best in a full stomach. What's this worth to you? Uh, Clark will whip out this strange-looking uh, wine bottle. Okay. And offer it to him. Um, remind me of where the wine bottle. Uh, is. It's the starting trinket that Clark had. Okay. Um, the right. Wizards of. Wizards of. Waverly Place. What? <laughs> the it's Wizards of, the of Wine's Winery. Right. Uh, Red yes. Dragon Crush and a date, I think. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, the wax is still good on this, too. It kind of holds the bottle up, and you can see him kind of sloshing a little bit. It's not a normal bottle. No, I can see that. Well, this, um, this could uh, inspire me to talk to a few more people. All Thank right. you. Thank you. And you see him kind of take the bottle and open up his jacket and put the bottle in, close his jacket up. Yep. Um... I should have an answer to you, let's say by tomorrow. All right. Uh, Where can I find you? The gutters. Any particular gutter? I'll make myself available. I'm sure you will. Well, I don't know what's happened, Clark, but uh, I hope you're not going to be off duty too long. You're quite an asset. You get that cleric to me and I'll have an answer for you quickly. So be it. Can I offer you anything in exchange for the moment? I think I just need some time. Time. It's such a wonderful luxury. I wish I had an elven time. That would be truly interesting. But I think I would get bored. 
I'm going to go. Right. And barely even acknowledging you can send it to you, he turns back to kind of the, the he stepped away from the, the crowd of, of uh, people that were looking for the answers as he usually is doing one of his performances. Mm -hmm. uh, and he leaves you be. Where do you find yourself? What are you, where are you going? Uh, go to a stash point, uh, stash all the regular clothes and weapons and such, and don some rags and a dagger and head okay. off into the streets. Head off into the streets. Onto the seedier side of town still? Oh, of course. Yeah. Also Probably like wind up in that soup kitchen in that warehouse, okay. for instance. Um, it is a busy night for that. You get the impression that um, it's busier than normal. I should do an insight check. Sure. Insight. Eleven. It's hard to tell exactly why. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in here who you've not seen before. Okay. You've been to the, the, the kitchen a couple of times. They have their regulars. People who are down on the luck. People who just have no other way of making meals. Some people are just doing it because it saves them a couple of bucks. And the food here is remarkably good. Right. Um, it has uh, a lot more flavor and spice than you might expect from the downtrodden, mm. uh, which probably gives it a bit of the extra people that are here. And uh, Dwarven Entertainment, if I remember correctly? Uh, he's not there this evening, but oftentimes, yes, there's yeah. a dwarven bard who's yeah. who's taking uh, 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 Flint Undgart is uh, is taking the stage. Yep. But the night, not so much. Um, you see that a few people have come in that look a little bit bloodied and disheveled. Um, you can smell the beer from here. Uh, they probably got into a pretty bad bar fight, and maybe they got thrown out of their inn. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say exactly, but you've seen that kind of type before. Um, looking around the room, though you see a familiar figure. One you did not expect to see here. Okay. A dwarf, a female dwarf. Her dark skin is uh, showing off her, um, just these sort of edges of tattoos you see as she turns. Okay. Um, her hair, unlike the last time you saw her, is bound tightly into braids, which them are then sub themselves are then braided together, both on her chin and back in the back of her head, kind of splayed up to, uh, together like that. Okay. Dressed in not entirely different clothes from you in terms of the quality, looking like rags, but you can make out every once in a while, being one professional to another, you can see the hints of the leather armor that's actually underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the two blades she was very well known for. Mm -hmm. uh, the two blades of... Uh, Adre Steel, uh, which is a, comes from her home. Is it um, shank? It's uh, it's not shank. Oh. Uh, it is in fact uh... oh, where did her name go? <laughs> I just realized I wrote everything but her name. Well then, we will quickly bring her name back to life. Uh, Gilba. Someone you haven't seen for a couple of years, mm. back in your time with Thorns of Regulars. She was one of the mm. fiercest. Uh, she knew her way around those blades like no one, and she could come at you without seeming to take any effort whatsoever. However, she was somewhat of a jolly sort, uh, and always had this smile on her face which seemed pretty genuine. Even in the most grisly of deeds, she would crack a joke or crack wise. All right. You see her lined up like everyone else, um, kind of uh, eager to get something to eat. She doesn't look like she's in, in bad straits, other than the facade that she's wearing with these clothes. Uh, Clark will muscle his way towards the line and wind up behind her. Okay. Not that hard to do. People are pretty docile. You do get a couple of people, hey, I was next. Uh, but then kind of with a look, they, okay, Clark will buddy, flash a tusk if need be. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it causes them to flinch a little bit. And the ones that happen to be right there, the one that complained, you feel like he's probably never actually punched anybody in his life, let alone got hurt. Right. Uh, but he is pretty thin. Okay. You find yourself behind her in line. Don't come any closer, sweetheart. I think you were trying something. She doesn't turn around, though. Uh, nothing right now. What are you doing here? I'm disappointed. I rather hoped you might be. And she turns around and you can see her smiling. That's, that's that familiar smile. Uh, she's got a, a tin uh, bowl that she's got and collected her, her element of the stew for the evening. Mm -hmm. 
It's good to see you, Clark. Yeah. Again. Didn't expect to see you on a line like this, though. What are you doing here? Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Shall we sit and eat? It's been a spell, hasn't it? Sure. And uh, she leads you over to a table, kind of in the corner where there's not too many people around. Right. Uh, and she starts eagerly digging in the soup. This is not half bad. I kind of expected swill. But this is actually tastes like food. Yeah, people know how to live here, don't they? Well, yeah. Come now. Why so Why so dour? Haven't seen you for... Well, not since that other job. Uh, where was that? It's down in a quain, I think, last time I saw you. Uh, you'd come to think of it. I think that was the last time you worked with... Uh, company, so to, so to speak. The company dispersed after that. Yes, well, I was already, already had my plans to go elsewhere. I was booked on board a ship, actually, the next morning. ship never sailed. Some misunderstanding about um, cargo or something. I don't... I've never cared for cargo that much. Right. I'm never going to lift a box if I can hold it. With help, I should say. So imagine finding you here. You look well. I mean, dressed like shit, but so am I. Are you working a job? Or are you here for the food? I'm here for the food. A little bit of rest. I can appreciate that. She takes another large uh, uh, spoonful of food. Rest. Well, you've never rested in a day in your life. They're always working. Not today. What's wrong with you, mate? I've been on some interesting adventures. Did you break up with someone? It's none of your business. Like three. Yeah, you did break <laughs> up with someone then. Well, then, that's different. That'll require a little bit of extra power. And she reaches back in the folds of her, of her jacket. You flinch for a moment. She comes forth with a small metal flask. Here, then. A little of this will cheer you up. She hands it to you. Uh, he'll take a swig. Okay. Well, even smelling it. Uh, it is a very strong brandy, surprisingly enough. A lot mm. sweeter than you expected to, her to have. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it gives you a little bit of, of, uh, of a, a burning on the throat, and there's that backwash of, of, of vapor that goes back up through your nose, and it kind of tickles. Mm. It's a bit stronger. Yeah, now, let's be fair. Back and forth. Yeah, uh, you'll hand it back. And uh, proceeding throughout the discussion, she'll, she'll hand it back and forth. All you. right. It looks a bit battered. You can actually see on one side of this of this uh, this metal flask is a, a particular divot. It probably stopped a weapon at one point. Um, so, as I said, that ship didn't sail, but right. the next one that was pretty good. I went on the sea for about six months. Got sick every night. I'm never going to do that again. I thought I was over that, but you know what? It's much different when you're up on deck and you're below. Yeah. I think I'm going to stay below if I ever travel again. Still, the money was good. Didn't have to sink too many other ships once or twice. Mostly, you can just scare them with a bit of what, too, yeah? But back to you and your girl. No guy. I'm not going to judge. Yeah. There's not much to say. Oh, come now. There's always much to say. You may not want to say it just yet, which is exactly why you need more medicine. She hands you back over the flask. Yeah. And a bit more um, Clark will tongue loosening. Clark will slow down a bit. Okay. He'll, he'll uh, nurse at the most the, so, the drink. Did you have to kill her? <laughs> no. Well, there's that at least. Um, yeah. Jealous yes. boyfriend? Uh, Bad no. money? Good deal? Uh... I think I got jerked around one too many times. Oh. Uh, one of those ones who doesn't doesn't uh, feed you back what you're feeding out, then. Oh, I see. I had that once myself. Punched him in the face. I cut the message across. He was much nicer after that. Still, that was one I did have to kill. Terrible business. I mean, he was the mark, after all. It was what was supposed to happen. I just took a little longer of the job. Had some fun. Mm hmm. So tell me, how did she screw you over? Did she leave you with bad money? No. Uh, she leave you, left you for someone else. Different 
uh, opinions on ethics and morals. Ethics and morals. Look at you. You always were a bit of a broody type, but you broke up with someone over ethics and morals. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Wow. Do tell, do tell. Not much to tell. Well, ethics and morals are big words. If there's nothing to tell, they aren't really <laughs> worth much, are they? Not worth the coin you can buy them for. Now, you and I both served in the military. Yes. They didn't like me too much. No. They didn't follow the rules too well. No. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, there weren't many rules. Uh, Most of them were more like suggestions. I've fallen into a group of friends and learned some things. It seems friends, like is it? you've done the same. Well, I've made a few acquaintances over time. I don't work with them anymore as much as I can, and I've decided to do honest adventuring. <coughs> honest? Well. Well, robbing the dead is easier than robbing the living. They scream a lot less. Not always, though, I found. It comes with less uh, complications. Except today, or tonight, or whenever this is. Yeah. Something got complicated. Yeah. Something involving the living, then? You're asking a lot of questions. I'm curious, mate. It's been a while. Over soup, I might add. It's good soup. Have you had it? This is no ordinary slop. I've had stuff that had barely anything that looked like meat, and some things that looked like meat I don't think were meat. The bigger mold pieces look great like meat, but they don't taste like it. Yeah. Uh, why, why are you here? Why are you asking me these questions? Why aren't you off doing something wonderful somewhere else? I'm sort of in between jobs at the moment. All right. I mean, I had a few things that were bringing me here, but it didn't pan out, so I'm kind of holding still. Okay. Never been to this city for very long. Only arrived two days ago. Uh, Clark will mention a few choice spots to find shelter and food, other mm -hmm. than this place, over the course of the conversation. Okay. Um, and he'll... Any place to have some fun? If you want that sort of business, I would speak to a friend of mine, and he'll mention Bazo at the Elegant Pony at such and such an hour of the day. All right, that sounds like fun, of one type or another. Um, I was thinking, since you're free now, maybe you need a little distraction. No, I'm good. But You're not that good. Thanks, but... I've seen good. happier faces on people I've just stabbed. <laughs> now, granted, I'm really good. Yeah, well... Uh, I'm going to pass for now. All right. I have some soul-searching to do. Who's solely looking for? Is it in a bottle? That sounds like fun. I'll tell you what, if you happen to find mine, let me know. And he'll get up from the table and politely excuse himself. Oi, mate, one thing before you go. Here's a tip. You can always go further down. It's much more fun to go up. And you know what? A tip for your company as well. And she flips you a coin. Uh, all right. He'll catch, he'll catch the coin. And he'll, and he'll return uh, very quietly a platinum. All right. She catches it midair. Not bad. Even real. Yeah. Imagine that. Disappears into her glove. It's been nice talking to you. Maybe we'll talk again sometime. I look forward to it. Maybe you'll be in a cheerier mood. Or I can make you a cheerier mood. Don't Would press you? your luck. We had a good conversation. Let's leave it at that. As you wish, mate. And he'll bugger off. Okay. Did you take a look at the coin? Uh, when he's good and private. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's easy to find a couple of dark alleys to, to go around. It's it's busy this time of night as people are kind of mulling around this area, but it's in one of the warehouses, and the warehouses themselves are quiet. Right. Uh, as you take a look at the coin, it catches the edge of the moonlight and shines quite brilliantly. It looks like a gold coin, but a little yeah. bit stranger and flatter. Okay. Uh, on the one side of the coin is a stylized, it looks kind of like that, it's a stylized mm -hmm. uh, dragon's head. I see that. Uh, and on the other, you see a hoard of wealth. Mm -hmm. 
And as you look at the coin, that hoard of wealth seems to shimmer slightly. Mm. And it catches a very brilliant edge of the mood of Marius overhead. And you see, for a moment, as the light catches it, the mirror of the curve, the small bit of the moon being displayed on the coin perfectly. Uh, Clark will smile and draw his sax. Okay. Uh, this is obviously either a moment of uh, great importance or great danger. Okay. As is Marius's way. <laughs> <laughs> um... That tends to be. <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. Sure. Incoming decker. Mm-hmm. Uh, dex saving throw, he said? Sure. Uh, nine. Nine? Yeah. The coin slips through your fingers and falls yeah. to the ground with a clink, 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 clink. Flip the coin. Mm-hmm. Says Mark to Jody. Oh, uh, I certainly will. Uh, horde. Horde? Yeah. When it hits the ground, it splits into ten gold coins. Hmm. With that one still in the center, still looking exactly as it did. Clark will pocket all of that. Flip right. it again. Unlimited money. Bad idea. <laughs> With the sack still drawn? Uh, yeah, for now. For now. You hold for ten minutes. Sure. Nothing seems to happen. Yeah. And the moon is occluded by a cloud. Hmm. Um, what's the weather looking like for the night? Looks like it's going to be cloudy. It's still warm, but it's going to be a little chilly tonight. Uh, one moment, sorry. Uh, despite that, I think Clark's going to find what he can to bundle up, and he'll spend the night on a rooftop. Okay. Make a survival roll. Sure. No. Uh, two. Two? Yeah, it's going to be a cold night. It is a cold night. Um, coming, going up on this uh, rooftop, this probably was the poor choice, as you realize the smoke from the hearth mm-hmm. is very wet. It looks like they were probably boiling or maybe even cleaning off clothes or something in the night, and you wake up with a, a bit of dampness all around you. Sorry. Um, He'll take it. To the, to the morning sun. All right. At least you got a long rest. I don't even. <laughs> I'm not sure that'll count. <laughs> that, that's a long rest. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a sufficient long rest. Zagus so was probably like too pumped about being like a real student to get a long rest. Like. All right. Um, you find yourself sleeping fine actually for that night. Cool. A little bit unnerved until you finally fall as- fall asleep. Well, you enter into your meditative state. No, because I fell half elf. Oh right, yeah, half, half elf. To sleep. Yeah, you ha- and you, one of those half of your body falls asleep, and the other <laughs> half is still in a some sort of strange pose. Um, <laughs> over those next couple of weeks, Zacchaeus, mm-hmm. Emerald starts the next day with your training. Okay, let me get my pages back. But what we're going to say for the next couple of weeks, basically the way this is going to work, is as transcribing those spells takes half as much time. Okay. Because Emerald's helping me with it. He will not... Um, he will refuse, however, to teach you anything about demon summoning. Because he's afraid of that. Okay, so... Um, cool. So I mean, he doesn't that. have access to my books, right? Not as far as you know. Okay. So th- those were still... Okay. Uh, so do I just um, well next to GM? Uh, mm-hmm. Do I just go off my list and pick off, pick off like whichever ones I want to inscribe her? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna just take half the, the amount of time. Hey. Um, the next day, for and we'll kind of move a little bit quicker, um, for uh, Elzara and Amrun. I'd like to just do one thing specifically. I'd like to take out my fine herbs book and okay. try to study this seed. Okay. To see if I can figure out what type of seed this is. Okay. Make another uh, uh, nature check. Which is at advantage. Because yep. of look. Oh, uh, an eight and a five is great. So <laughs> uh, that is uh, 15. Okay. You say you're going to have to repeat this. Like you go back to the book several times throughout the week. Uh, in the end, it is a walnut seed. 
which is stuck inside, but it's not doesn't have its shell. Somehow the seed was extracted from its shell, and the amber around it is acting like a shell. Interesting. Um, this should not happen. Uh, walnuts, when they become seeds, uh, the shell is an integral part of the seed. So there's no way this should have happened, but it did. Okay. Uh, and other than that, I'm going to do what I can to prepare the grove for what needs to be done. Okay. Work with Old Fen. And um, old Fen uh, takes one look at the place and says, I'm not going in there until it's cleaned out. There's something <laughs> wrong about this place. Um, Kosh has actually, you don't see him the next day, and Fernandra actually tells you that he's off again. Uh, he, he didn't have time to leave. He left before sun, sun up uh, and said that he had to deliver Eldfen. That was his that was his job. But he's already been given... Uh, he was talking to a squirrel that morning and he had to leave right away. Okay. What is Amrun up to? Mm, I assume that he eventually gets told that Clark had left his armor there. Yeah, the next day your people will tell you that... Oh, by the way... Your half-orc friend dropped off the armor. Okay, um... He seems to be performing a scrying spell. <laughs> yeah, um... What I'll be doing. Okay. Checking in on him. What time of day are you doing it? Oh, actually I won't, because I don't have any spell slots, so... Okay. I'll just... I guess check out the new place. Okay do general uh, cleric stuff. Some of the others have uh, come with you to kind of look at the place over. Um, given an assessment, it, it's probably been empty for half a dozen years. Um, there are holes in the roof and it looks like a family of squirrels. Not just one, not just two. A family of squirrels have moved in. Um, but the bones aren't bad. Um, with a bit of effort and a bit of construction, they can get underway pretty well. Sure. I just look around for Car like carpenters and whatnot to hire. Okay. One of your followers, I believe, actually is a carpenter. I think so, yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. Anyway, I forget which one offhand, unfortunately. Um, but a number of them are, are handy with, uh, with things. So they get started on that. The second night, similar set of nightmares. And once again, you do not have a full light's rest, and you now have a point of exhaustion. Similar with Elzera, is the nightmares recur. Many of them, different ways that the queen kills you, often with fire. And again, no night's rest and a level of exhaustion now. So what do you do after that? You can tell now that something is definitely wrong. Mm-hmm. Pray to Pelexia, I guess. Okay. I don't have anything else that'll protect me, so... Okay. Mm. What is your prayer to Pelexia? Mm. Something's attacking me that's getting through my meditations. I could use some help. Okay. Um, make a... Hmm. Make a religion roll. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. The one thing that didn't recur from the night before was Damon Triesk yeah. entering into your dream. Um, that evening, however, as the nightmares start, and you can feel your body kind of tensing up, and um, the cold sweats start to kick in, something seems to happen. You feel as though you are standing beneath a cool, clear waterfall. In fact, you recall the waterfall flowing out of the Temple of, Ser of Serenity, or the Serene Temple, the one which indicated the, the door um, as well. But it feels, uh, it feels like that water, but, but stronger, and it washes over you. 
um, and your mind goes blank. Not the typical meditation at all, but a complete blankness. And you're left with the fading vision of the rakshasa in your mind. But you do indeed get a good night's rest. And you do indeed get your your uh, spell slots back. And the night and the point of exhaustion is also washed away. But it cool. feels as though there was some lingering affliction mm. when the rakshasa hit you. I would have actually not the second day I would have sent messages to the rest of them saying that I've got some sort of nightmare plague with uh, what spell? I send messages. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't have any spells at that point. Um, okay. Uh, Zakis, you do not receive a message. Uh, Clark, no one knows where to deliver a message. Mm -hmm. uh, and Elzera, once you return to where you're staying, you receive the message. But that would be the following day because you weren't at home. Yep. Um. I'm going to guess I've been staying with Ferengra because we're dealing with this. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I am going to talk to Old Fen. Okay. Um, what can I help you with, dear? What do you know of my mother's sister? Make an inside check. Well, that is a 21. 21? I think. Yes, 21. It's as though a cloud passes over the normally sunny face of old Fen. Not much. Why do you ask? Because I've been having nightmares for the past two, three days about her killing me by fire, usually. Oh, dear. Well, perhaps they're just dreams. Well, I hope that they go away soon because... I can't do anything right now. I just want to sleep for days, and whenever I sleep, the nightmares. Well, I don't know what I can do. Ferendra might be able to help you. Uh, I can brew you some delicious tea that should help you sleep. I'm at a point where I need information, and my mother won't give me any. I sure she has her reasons and it's obvious now especially from the earlier role that she's uncomfortable talking about this I'm sure it has nothing to do with her why does no one want to tell me what's going on what do you mean that's that's not true I... you, you know more than you're saying and I don't I don't like trying to force people to talk to me I know that there must be reasons, but the wild hunt has been a problem for everyone. I don't like having to tiptoe around people's back to steal information. It's getting frustrating that my mother won't talk to me. I had to, we had to basically threaten that Amrun would plant the seed to be able to get any help with this. She, she says I know how to I know how to contact her when I have Amrin do sendings and that I can contact her myself, but when I do she never answers. I, I understand. Sit down. And she proceeds to start brewing a tea. I don't know everything, despite what some of the younglings have said. I hear their voices. I'm not that old. But I know a few things. Your mother hasn't always had it easy. She had to fight for a lot of things in her life. Fight for respect. Fight for justice. And fight family from time to time. There was a time, a long time ago now, I was, well, I wasn't exactly a child, <laughs> but I was much younger than I am now. Gray hair did not illuminate my look. 
It was a bad time for the Druids. A bad time for your family. For your mother. Your mother's sister believed that the grove was impure. The powers of the grove had dwindled somewhat, and we all grew concerned. Some of the protections we had to keep the grove a secret were not working, and hunters were wandering into our lands. <coughs> Some of the hunters were hunting us, I think. Many of the druids found themselves similarly diminished. Some of them could no longer change their shape, no longer become the wonderful animals. Your mother and others believed it was something that was happening in the world. But your mother's sister, your aunt, believed it was something else. Rasatra believed that the Druids had fundamentally failed to keep ourselves pure. She believed that the sacred covenants given to the Druids millennia ago were given only to the elves. She believed that all the non-elves should be left out of the grove. I see. What began then was not fondly remembered. There aren't a lot that are still alive that remember any of it. I'm one of the few. Your mother was confused by this. She believed her sister utterly for so many years, practically worshipped at her feet. Her sister was older, wiser, stronger than any other druid. She was, after all, the arch druid. It took your mother a long time to be to truly understand what had happened. It was the death of her first husband that really made her understand. He was a half-elf, but the heritage ran strongly in him. The fact that he's now called the King of the Wild Hunt probably bothers her more than anything. How that happened, I do not know. Your mother worked alongside many other druids to create a ritual. Something to summon upon the very powers of the world, of Marius and Marina, to to use their power. Similar to the way the groves work, where they are able to open a portal to elsewhere. They opened another portal, while the rest of the druids pushed them through. At that point, at that point they were truly known as the Wild Hunt but they did not follow the words of Marius and Marina. They had found other beings to take their place, to become stronger. 
One of the reasons that the trials are as they are today is to make sure that the hearts of the Druids are pure, not in the way that Versatra had believed, but in the way that we believe. They will do what is necessary. They will figure out the wrongs that are being done and, and fix them. Sorry, this is old memories that are hard to remember. I'm not surprised your mother can't speak of it. Because I believe... I think that she believed when the portal was opened, they were forced through, that her sister was gone forever. And for her to be back now... I can't imagine if I had to do something like that to Ezzy. Fortunately, your brother has more sense than that. I hope. Thank you for telling me. I feel like I can... I can find a better solution knowing the more information that I can. I hope I haven't overstepped my boundaries. I hug her. <laughs> You're a good girl. Your mother's good, too. But she has the weight of the world on her right now. I believe they're trying to do the ritual again. I don't think it's going to work. She's been fooled once, as they say. Indeed. Well, that tea will be ready right <laughs> <by> now. <laughs> and she kind of busies herself getting back into the, the that and uh, trying to uh, to almost push aside that talking about mundane matters talking about this time of year she's normally planting these sorts of things her garden would be overflowing she misses her garden but she's happy to be here um, do you drink the tea? yeah make a constitution throw. <laughs> cool. seems to be a theme <laughs> not 20 okay um, the tea is very nice and very warm, and you find yourself nodding off a bit, and then kind of, as if you've ever, and you're a student, so I'm sure you have, if you've ever been in the middle of class, <laughs> and you're really tired, and your head starts to drift downward towards the table, and you go, Bleh! and suddenly you, you wake up suddenly. It's basically what just happened to you. Yeah. Is the tea good? Did you like some more? And you look over, and you notice that she hasn't touched her tea. Mm -hmm. She's been oh, drinking well. water. Yeah. Good. Well, excuse me, I've got some doddering about to do. I'd like to see some of this town, and uh, Ferendra said she would give me a guide, so. Mm. I'll finish my cup of tea. Okay. And if you choose to, you could go down and go to sleep right now. Yeah. But the natural instinct of fighting off the sleep is what you were doing. Yeah. Uh, I will do that. Okay. Uh, you sleep deeply maybe a bit in, undignified as an elf because normally you're used to kind of getting your proper position and this is the sort of I'm getting my proper position yeah. kind of drift like down. I actually sleep I don't meditate <laughs> type thing. meditate yeah. lying down it's, it's literally unconsciousness at this point yeah and you wake feeling somewhat refreshed mm -hmm. but you do still have a point of exhaustion okay you did not dream at all so far as you know So, can we fast forward a bit, or are there particular things that people want to do? Just one really tiny particular thing. Like, sure. after the meeting with Emerald, I would send the following, like, uh, standing messages to Amrun. Okay. I've become Emerald's student, but have been ordered to have no more dealings with Palexia, including you. You are a good person. First sending over. I wish you no ill will. Our adventures were spectacular, and I will remember them forever. Hopefully we will be on the same side again. Yeah, just, you know... Your companions you respond. You may, you may respond to Are these sendings or sendings? Okay. Uh, first response is thanks. What? <laughs> Second one. Sure. I don't think we're not on the same side, but okay. Okay. 
So now it's third. <laughs> Sad <Okay>. faces. <laughs> um, oh, and a question to the DM. Uh, mm-hmm. You said it was half the time to inscribe the spells. Is it also mm-hmm. half the cost? No. Okay. The cost is the ink, and the spell doesn't get any shorter. Okay. But his, under his instruction, you don't have any mistakes. Okay. Okay. Um, some point in the next middle of the night. Okay. Once my meditations are done, I will scry on <coughs> Clark. In the middle of the night? Yes. Okay. What would Clark be doing in the middle of the night? Probably easily, easily uh, scried. Okay. He's probably just yeah. slumming it somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm trying to pick a point where I figure he would be asleep. Yeah. So like are you keeping your 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 roguish sleep hours, or, or are you? you and whatever the roguishly normal sleeping cycle would be, he probably flipped it a bit. So okay. he's probably a night bird nowadays. Okay. Well, let's say he's probably asleep then. Okay, I'm going to try and identify roughly where. Uh, make a survival roll. 21. 21. Um, it's a bit difficult at first, especially because Scry has a very limited point of view of what's around the person. Uh-huh. Um, you identify it first as a rooftop. That makes, makes it pretty easy to see, uh, partially because you see a... Uh, a uh, a raven kind of fly in and kind of land nearby and realize, well, it has to be somewhere where they can get yeah. to. Uh, if it's a roof, I'll be looking for what kind of roof it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a, a wide, flat uh, warehouse roof. That would probably be the easiest place to, to go. Uh, so you know it's in the warehouse district, and you probably can identify if you're in that district. Um, is Lucille nearby? No. Okay. Um... It seems to be dressed in rags. Okay. Uh, I will go to the warehouse district right after that. Okay. Middle of the night. With that roll, I figure you kind of narrow it down pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, You see very few people out this time of night. I will have uh, Thorn flying overhead. Okay. And I will cast uh, locate item. Okay. I just have to check if that lets me switch between things I look for. I, have I to don't f- believe have so. To cast it separately. Actually, either way, I mean, assuming I'm not going to need to worry too much about my spells for today, uh, he will try looking for the sacks. Yeah, you'll probably find it. Um, basically, it's got a range of a thousand feet, so I just kind of try to narrow it in to wherever the sax is. Anyways, if it's separate from you, then <coughs> it's that, with him. Um, and I'll have Thorn kind of just look down. It's like, oh, is that him? Um, Thorn recognizes him, so he'd be able to yeah. point out. Uh, well, yeah, I'll look through Thorn's eyes. And where is the sax? It's with him. Oh, sax is on you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all I'll do is um, he would have written this out beforehand because it's dark at night. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll just have a, a note saying, "I'm not sure what's up, but if there's anything I can do to help, you need just ask." I will not search further if that's what you want. Okay. And then I'll have Thorn just drop the message sort of on him or near him, like stick it in something where it's obvious but not easily blown away. Okay. Uh, preferably slide it under like an arm, but I don't want Thorn getting shivved in the process. <laughs> have uh, Thorn make a, uh, a dexterity uh, check. And what Thorn's dex is... I think I still have Prina. I had like re her, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming that generally... You get a five on the die, so oh, he's sure. not going to be high enough. But uh, make a perception check at this advantage. Sure. Perception. Okay. Uh, 18. 21. 21? 
So uh, Thorn flies in, kind of gusts a bit to to come in slowly. Lands uh, on your face. Kind of lands with well, lands on the note, which makes this crumpling sound, oh. and then kind of reaches down with the, with his beak, picks up the note, which kind of bats you across the nose, and you're kind of woken up slightly to see uh, a not unfamiliar form of Thorn thrusting a piece of paper straight at your face. Paper. <laughs> okay. And then Thorn flies off. Yep. Kind of gives you an odd look and then flies off. Right. And that's it. I'll just head back to... It's dark to read the note. Yeah, he'll you... save it for later okay. when it's light. All right. The next day, um, you see the note. Oh, read the note. Okay. He resisted an urge to bring a light blanket to drape over you. <laughs> If you had this cantrip light, it could literally be a light blanket. <laughs> that would make it hard to sleep. Um, and that's it. I just go back to doing church stuff. Okay. Um, do you respond to the note or otherwise? Uh, read it. Okay. Noted. Noted. All right. Um, it's about time you woke up. When you can see the very familiar uh, form mm -hmm. on the edge, kind of actually, kind of uh, perching almost on the edge of the the rooftop. You again? Who else would it be? I'm not sure. Uh, what do you need? It's not what I need. How are you feeling today? I'm doing fine. What do I have to do to get you to leave me alone? <laughs> I'm not an easy one to get rid of. I understand that. Uh, please indulge me. Well, as far as what I've been told, I'm here for you, Bank. Do I get a choice? Everybody's always got a choice. All right. Do I have to choose between dead or living? Well, you can always make that choice too, mate. All right. What's the, what, what do you want? He'll get up and gather his things. I didn't know why I was coming to this city, to be honest. Something about throwing up bones and turning up certain ways, and here I am. Turns out I had a reason to be here. I spoke with your bozo. Oh, so you're the one I'm waiting for. I've always wanted you to hear, to hear you say that. <clears throat> Don't take it too seriously. Oh, I never take anything too seriously, except when I do. So do you have any uh, books or vestments that can prove you are who you say you are? Well. Maybe a religious icon of some kind? Oh, man, it doesn't work like that. I didn't think it would. But you got my coin, didn't you? I did. Did you want that back? Oh, no, that's yours. Think of it as a keepsake. For old time's sake. All right. Well, I, I appreciate you. Why do you need to see a priest? I have some problems I'd like to discuss with you. Excellent. Is this a daggers out situation or daggers in? Uh, let's put daggers out of the conversation for now. I can do that. Okay. Where does one go for a bit of grub in the morning? Uh, I'm sure we can find an inn somewhere. Excellent. I love inns. And out. All right. Uh, Clark will go to, way. go to stash, find his stuff, get dressed. Okay. Take him to her to someplace a little more reputable. Okay. Not necessarily the elegant pony, but something similar. Something similar. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, basic inns. Yeah. And, and, uh, it doesn't need to be fancy. <laughs> it's and a basic, capital city. Uh, there's mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a place that has its own fireplace would be great. All right. Um, yeah, there's a roaring fire. There's not a lot of people in the uh, room at this part of the morning. She orders mead. Mm. A bit of sweet for the morning. Plus sure. he's got a bit of a kick. If you're buying. Sure. Okay. And she tops a coin, flips it out on the desk, and splits it into ten, ten gold pieces. It's a neat trick, by the way. Mm. It's a bit of a, a bit of a keeper. She mm. takes the one coin, puts it back in her pocket, and gives the other nine gold, which well covers the breakfast. What happens to the person who uh, flips the dragon? You don't want to do that. Yeah. Don't worry. And there's no telling when that's going to happen. Oh, there is a bit. Oh. Depending on what part of what part of the practice you are in. 
Okay. Well, I'm not practicing anything right now. No, you're uh, you're semi-retired. My concern uh, over breakfast is uh, matters of the mind and magic and purpose. Oh, well. Are we talking the big picture of matters of the mind or a little picture? I can't remember the name of someone. Big picture. Ah. So what is on your mind or off your mind? I have issues with people investigating my mind magically. Why? Do you have secrets in that head of yours? If you've been in my business long enough, you would have a few. But that's not really my concern. No? What are you worried about? I've put myself into bondage for reasons. My own purposes. Um, Long-term contracts. Never was one for those. Those are voluntary. And I do them for a reason and a, an eventual greater good. That family of yours. Yeah. Um, other... Uh, other types of bonds uh, have been forced upon me, and I, I don't like their uh, consequences. What sort of bondage aren't you into? Of the mind. Ah. They're but afraid of losing your noggin? Compulsions. I am. Terrible thing, that is. I've seen it happen. Mm. And when it's them, it's fine, but when it's me, I get a little... Worrisome. Worrisome. That's one way to put it. You're off your nut, is what you are. Probably. You've been shaken to your core. What did they do to you? What did this girl do to you? Sea creature of some kind. A sea creature? Gave me the well, great... Well, I'm not one to judge, but gave that's me a bit one outside of the my greatest <laughs> gifts expertise. I've ever experienced, and then had it snatched away. Ah. <sighs> I've also been to a jungle island where I felt for the first time that I had been home. Jungle island? Also torn away from me. And now confronted with my uh, newer lover uh, having threatened to do the same, um, I decided to call it quits for a while. Can't trust yourself, can you? I'm wondering if I can trust her. And yet, and yet, you're not willing to try that trust. I'm not retired. I'm just taking a break. Suppose. I need, I need some focus. Hmm. And I would like your guidance as what my guidance? Maria sees fit. Wow, this is an interesting day. I'm a little new to this business, you might say. Mm-hmm came to me in a dream, so to speak. So I can't give you any fancy prayers or... Um, I mean, if you want me to wear a robe, I can probably do that. I'll shortly be out of money, so I hope whatever advice you give me comes soon, because I won't be able to ask it again later. So what are you looking for? Direction, purpose, uh, protection from the probing tendrils of magic. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps a way to end it. Cancel it. Well, that's a tall order. Not a lot of people can provide such a thing. Are you interested in following Marius? Uh, no. I'm Pity not, that. I'm not the one for robes. <laughs> Neither am I, dear. Except maybe early in the morning. I'd be cleaning them constantly for yes. the work that I do. Yes. And she's in her normal clothing, not in the uh, the rags this morning, yeah. by the way. So is he. It does get to be a bit tedious. I found it helps to have a few extra bits and pieces you can put out in front. Catch all the nastiness. Well, if you're not looking to follow, there's only so much I can do for you. But I can do a few things, especially for an old friend. This is really getting you bothered. I've never seen anybody get inside your mind in one way or the other. I was younger then. Uh, well, Maybe I'm getting too old. 
There you are, half an orc. Don't have a really long lifespan. Still, the orcs not had a party. Wouldn't know. Ah, yes, that's true. You haven't made the trip home, have you? No. Well, I've done a few services up there. Strange place. Full of fun. Deadly? Maybe. But is your problem? Hmm. Well, I can offer a few things, but I'll need a few things in return. Name your price. Oh. <laughs> oh. Forgive me if I take a moment. But those those words aren't really often in my line of business. Not anymore. I can give you something. Something of mine own. But she can give you protection. If that's what you're looking for. It's a bit dangerous, but it works. All right. I'll think on that price, though, for later. Tell me, are you going to reconcile with your girlfriend? I intend to, if I can get this matter dealt with. Hmm. Now, as for the complete removal of all magic, that's, that's a bit of a tall order. Even for someone as spectacular as I can be. Just just magic that affects the mind. All right, then. Is there a way to... wipe it from the books that these magicians use? Well... Yes. Where well, there's a will, there's a way to protect that will. Let's... Put that on the list too, then. But that's the one I can deal with immediately if you need it. Okay. Now, don't take this personally, Han. We're not getting married. And she reaches over and pulls off one of the rings off of her finger. Now, this little beauty, I found this one. Oh, I don't remember who died for this one, but someone did, I'm sure of it. Probably a politician. They, of all of the folks, have this particular interest in keeping their heads on straight and their own. <laughs> but I'm willing to give, with, give this to you, to part with it for the moment. My new allegiance, my new business partner, Marius, affords me certain privileges of my own, so I don't really need it anymore. Still, it was a pretty jewel, and I hate to lose it uh, that easily. But it's yours. She hands you a ring. All right. The ring has a blue gem on it. And as you kind of look at it casually, you can see that the gem seems to be semi-transparent. Okay. But inside, there seems to be an inscribed rough surface, um, almost <laughs> like the... Uh, you, you would have seen in some cases, almost looks like a brain mm. on the inside. This what? little dearie will help you uh, clamp your mind shut, as they say. All right. More magic. Takes one to know one, as you say. How much? Oh, the price will come later, dear. Don't worry. I cannot exceed the price that I owe to my family. And as long as it's less than that, fine. Oh, coin. <laughs> the price for this won't be coin. Don't worry. I would never charge coin from one such as you. All right. Coin's too easy, after all. Although remarkably shiny. Okay. Well. Now, as for your other problems, let's talk some more. Okay. So we're going to outline the rest of that discussion. Oh, sure. So what else are you really asking for? Uh, he's looking for protection against magic. Okay. That's, that's coercive. Okay. Um... He's looking for a, a chance at someday maybe obliterating that sort of that that kind of magic okay. from oh, hell from no. our plane. <laughs> yeah. um, and I th basically, he's just looking for like direction, like spiritual direction. Okay. Like, where should I be hanging my hat on these things? Okay. For the rest of that day, and actually for a couple of days of talking. Mm -hmm. um, she hangs around with you and drops a little bit of the pretense that she normally has. Right. Um, 
but it's still recognizably her. It's still still kind of that that very positive outlook on even the worst of things. Mm -hmm. um, when you attune to the ring, as it is a magic item, mm -hmm. uh, it's called a ring of mind shielding. Okay. It's a wonderful, wonderful item. Uh, no Did you stab Klesak for it? Please tell What's me. That? Did you stab Klesak for it? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. Um, its primary feature is that no one can affect your mind unless you wish it. Nice. It's magic, but still. It nice. is magic. Um, she tells you, though, as, as you kind of, well, the next day, she mm -hmm. tells you, uh, as she sees you kind of being accustomed to wearing it. Now, but if you do, don't die. Generally good advice. But especially don't die while wearing that ring. All right. Bad things will happen. She leaves it at that. Clark will leave it on a pinky then. Okay. <laughs> so Easier to remove. Yeah. Yes. Um, he can lose a pinky if it needs to. And yeah, you've never seen anybody else with this ring, I just realized. Because they, they have actually seen people with this ring. Mm. Um, police act, as someone pointed out. Had a very similar ring. Um, so I don't know personally, myself as GM, the right words that you're looking for. But I'm sure they're mentioned. You discover a lot them. more. <laughs> she describes the the. It it it's not described as worship, right? With Marius, especially for her, she sees this as a as a partnership. Yeah, and the partnership is there's a couple of things that are key elements of it. Right. Uh, one is pleasure, okay. not only pleasure for yourself, but bringing pleasure to others. Right. Uh, which doesn't <laughs> surprise you that it suited her well for that. Another is commerce. Specifically, that money needs to move. Right. Money that's sitting in one place is not good mm. to Marius. So the idea of, of another thing that she used to do all the time, stealing, but not necessarily stealing for her own, her own benefit. Mm. Um, and in fact, she is generous, uh, both with the, you know, even that breakfast, she gave the guy nine gold for right. a standard breakfast, which is way too expensive. Yeah. Um, but there's that, that idea of the movement of commerce is another element that she agrees with. Um, one of the others, which she's not as much uh, uh, attuned to, mm -hmm. is that of prophecy. Marius has glimpses of the future, and sometimes the past, but she's not experienced that. Right. Um, but um, that is another element, another pathway that could be followed. She's not interested in that pathway. Mm. Um, but it gives her it gives her purpose. So where, while she sometimes still stabs and kills people, she still steals things from people. There's a very different direction in what she's doing, and she's very careful about the jobs that she takes on. Right. Uh, in fact, she says she never takes on a job that she knows would contradict those those things. And moreover, she usually researches the job before doing it to find out more. Mm. Um, but then there's also the the sense of giving pleasure to others. And that can be as simple as someone who's hungry gets food mm. or something as more central as someone who really needs to gets a great night. Right. So that's a lot where she's angling at. But she does seem to be trying to, and you kind of get the sense that part of her attempt is the pleasure attempt. She's trying to make sure you feel better. Right. And Be happy, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and over the course of those couple of weeks, you start to to come. Well, you can describe how your character reacts to mm. it. How does your character react to it? Um, probably through bar fights. <laughs> okay, she's also still fine with he's, those. He's a big fan of hurting people. I mean, that's what he does. Mm -hmm. So, you find a, a weird resonance in part of your own philosophy as well, because, like you. When she enters into a bar fight, and she does, uh, the knives go away. Yeah. If she needs to cut somebody, she uses a knife, mm. but nothing more than what she needed. Right. Uh, not indifferent. Not different in some ways from the philosophy you've exhumed, uh, exhibited. Cool. Okay. Um, back to Amrun. Are you going to be leaving the city? Um. Probably not yet. I mean, we're in the middle of setting it up. What he will be doing, though, is uh, every day at noon, he will be asking uh, Palexia for divine intervention. 
Okay. Uh, basically, he'll be asking for uh, her assistance uh, because he can't count on teleport circles anymore because mm -hmm. he can't cast oh, no. that and the resident caster isn't allowed to talk with him anymore because uh, daddy says I'm bad. <laughs> Wait, was, uh, that, was that during the first few days of the break? Because if it was like, bef like before I met Emerald, then I can totally do a teleport circle. No, it's uh, Emerald knowing that he has to have something more lasting than yeah, that. Yeah, I suppose. Um, so he's basically asking for her for some way that I mean, whatever scale she slash you decides that they would be able to move to the other temple or back. Okay. Uh, because now that he's lost that connection, he no longer has that ability to get there fast, and right. it's like a two-week trip. So. Mm -hmm. Full of centaurs. Um, he has a 10% chance every day, and the way the way the mechanics work is I can, I, I can try once per day at 10%. If it actually happens, I can't use this ability for another week. Okay. Let's see how long it takes. Yes. So assuming starting on the third day of the two weeks. Sure. So, so 11 rolls. 11 rolls. <laughs> uh, oh, dang. I was hoping for a zero 05, but that's a 50. <laughs> zero 03. Okay. Second day. So second day. And, I mean, that can, you can come up with that later if you want as well, whatever it actually is. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, at that point, yeah, he's out for a week, and then... He'd maybe once he can start asking again, it probably would just be about uh, um, could you or uh, could she create a way that uh, dang it, I'm thinking Darius Hellstrom, but no, that's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, ghost dude, uh, Damon Trieste. Yes. Uh, we'll call him Ghost Dad now. Um, uh, could exist at this temple as well. Okay. Uh, he may be able to come through and return. Okay. Um, so I've got like th three chances. No, two chances. 46. 98. Nope. Okay. But just as a background thing, that's what he would be working on. Okay while they're fixing the place up. So, as you start to assemble the necessary uh, workers and equipment and um, raw lumber and different things to try to revive this this uh, once thriving inn now a bit off the beaten path, you actually get the impression that this inn is a lot older than you initially uh, realized as it follows what would have been the, the trade route that came into the city earlier, but the city expanded out, outward from there. So this inn is probably a couple of hundred years old, but its foundation was very well built. Mm. Um, you actually uh, get um, uh, one of the workers that comes by is a, a dwarven uh, a worker, dwarven mm. smith, and actually points out that the foundation is actually dwarven stone. Mm. Uh, it will never uh, break under any, yep. any normal circumstance. Um, which means the foundations are very, very good. There's actually a bit of a, a root cellar basement to this as well. Um, and they start to to work on things, and you you at noon humbly go and, and start to say your prayer each day. The others gather around you to try to become part of the the ritual of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll bring them into it, in, including uh, 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 well, actually not including Catherine, which only you seem to notice. Mm -hmm. um, She's not allowed to harm any of my people. And on that fourth day. On that fourth day, as you've been kind of uh, uh, calling out and 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 leading, probably a, a, a an audible prayer at first, mm -hmm. and then your private prayer um, for guidance, um, the ground begins to rumble and shake, and your followers stand up aghast and start moving backwards. Some people start screaming off in the distance. Each of you in the city also also hear and feel a bit of a short earthquake that happens. Okay. One thing I heard is the ground would always rumble a little bit when he casts spells, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, so his this people is, might be a little more used this to This is it, much lar larger yeah, yeah. than that. Yeah. Uh, even you are kind of surprised that, that it's rumbling. Although you feel no shaking of yourself, you feel rooted to the spot as if um, for you, you are there's part nothing of the happening. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. a part of the shake. What day is this on? Um, Land whale. This is uh, midway through the first week. Um, and then. Um, 
in the courtyard of the, I think it was an L-shaped building, essentially. Sure. Uh, in that courtyard, you see the stone there, which it also, after you cleared away some of the, the uh, grass that had overgrown, there's actually a really nice dwarven stone courtyard, mm. um, begins to shake, and then snack, one, one, one stone shoots straight up and breaks. And from it, you see a small trickle of water, and then whoosh, another larger geyser of water, and then suddenly... Five stones are thrown up in the air as a, as a water rush uh, comes up out of the ground and starts to to uh, to spray in a circle. Um, you see as the water lands and you get kind of soaked by this, uh, the water feels warm to you. It does not feel cold despite the fact that it must have come from deep below. And you see where the water lands in the circle. Um, there, It does not land in a flat or simple pattern but in fact inscribed a similar pattern to what you'd seen that surrounded the uh, mm. the water, um, the, 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 fountain. the fountain in the Serene Temple. And you get a vision in that instant that if you built that same uh, water fountain here as an anchor essentially for, mm. for the temple, there would be a connection forged. Do I get a sense that it has to be the same size? Or just the same look. The vision you have is of the same size. That was that a was large 60 monument. Feet tall. Yes, that was a very large monument. Um, okay, um, that's what stone shape is for. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I can cast it a few more times now. Um, okay, uh, yeah. Actually, the first thing he would do is go out and use stone shape to sort of create a basin. There are uh, city guards that are coming to inspect what the hell just happened. Um, and what do you tell them? I tell them that uh, I've prayed for a uh, assistance from Paluxia. I was going to say a sign from Paluxia, but that would actually be lying. Um, I said I pray for assistance in uh, setting up. Uh, pray for assistance from Paluxia in setting up the temple. Uh, so she has uh, gifted us with a, a water source and a fountain. One of your followers yells out, Behold the power and witness the strength and existence of Paluxia. Uh, and there's a bit of a chant that goes up, All uh -huh. hail Paluxia! May she I forever will, be our, our, our leader. I will play that to the hilt. Uh, we have a light show uh, and uh, some nice uh, queen style sports stadium, like in the round, like. Uh, uh, prayers to say. Uh, Make I a am, performance check. Uh -huh. I'm not a please roll a one, please. This, this <laughs> will go for a little circle. Now, thankfully, I got a 22. To okay. Duh, that would have come uh, like so full circle. It draws circle. a very large crowd. A crowd actually not entirely uh, non uh, not entirely different from the crowd that came when you sanctified mm -hmm. the area in the middle of the city, uh, which still itself has that that magical glow to it. Um, the the guards themselves seem a bit taken aback. One of them is sort of scraping his head. Like, I don't know. And I can water shape too because I got that cantrip now. <laughs> As you make this this incredibly intricate uh, and uh, large uh, demonstration, um, make a uh, make an insight check. We're coming up on six two. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, twenty three. Twenty three. Uh, a large number of people in the crowd are there just to spectate at something big and bizarre and wonderful. Um, you do notice a few of them, though, who are pretty angry. Um, and you catch one of the guards as they're, as they're going away. You just happen to hear, uh, as you know how it happens when there's a loud commotion going on. And for whatever instant, whatever reason, uh -huh. there's an instant of just clear sound. And you hear someone say, um, never did trust with these, these uh, godly types. What has come to Vitor? Mm. Can't make everybody happy. And with that, you have your, your vision to go forward. And with that, we'll also take a quick break. We'll do like 15 minutes here. Although you watching at home will see nothing change other than a small moment. Uh, one thing I want to say is uh, during the pause, I'll try to leave it in. I usually edit these out. But um, I've added um, uh, some of the chibi pictures that were done by an artist in the area. I don't have credits for them right now. but uh, uh, It is Lauren from Mostly Pix uh, Pixel Art. Uh, I have shared uh, in the Facebook group some mm -hmm. of her work in the past. Yeah, awesome. Those are pretty so. cool, and I'm hoping to, to, to buy a few more pics from her in the future. And uh, we'll have everybody... I don't know what Chibi Emerald will look like. I kind of want to do that one, but oh, I'm afraid God, yes. of it. 
so we'll be back in uh, in a few minutes here. Just to pardon me for looking away from you, but it had to happen. We'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> second half of what's going on Which today camera? <laughs> it's the one up there cameras all over the place <laughs> i'm gonna hang i need to hang like lights on them or something i mean they have lights on them but it's, it's still. like or a sign next look there <laughs> <laughs> i kind of want to make a big face and have the camera be one of the eyes but it would be weird <laughs> that, that would cause us to like look up and forget it's there every once in a while and just start laughing <laughs> that's true that's true it would be weird to have faces staring at you hi everybody i hope you're staring at us right now as we do our awkward continuation of the game anyway <laughs> on that note um we pick up with clark once more right. after a few days of talking with um gilba mm. about this whole thing uh, a uh, a young boy, a familiar young boy, Thank Jacob, you. uh, runs up to you. All right. I'll resist the urge to kick him. <laughs> he keeps a healthy distance away from you. Smart boy. He comes up and shanks you. <laughs> he removes one of your knuckles. No. Um, <laughs> through the skin. Uh, that gets dark all of a sudden. Jacob's not that dark. <laughs> Mr. Bozzo wants to speak to you. Good enough. Go be in the usual places. All right. Clark kind of holds out a hand. Clark will drop a coin. Okay. Not the coin, not a, a gold coin. <laughs> he just gave away that. No. Um, uh, thanks, mister. And she, he kind of runs away. Yeah. Um, you hadn't kept track of what happened to, to him after rescuing in the basement, but he looks better. It looks like he's been taken care of. And if he's working for Bazo, that kind of gives you some indication of where he's, where he's coming yeah. to. Um, although you knew he was working for um, the what was it Grant's, I, f I forget what I called it, but it was Jack Grant's group mm -hmm. for a while. Um, if you follow up, yeah, yeah. and head over to Bazo, um, Clark will look like himself, okay. minus the murmur. I've got some place to go be, so I'll catch up to you later. Sure. And she kind of wanders off in her own direction, uh, winks at you as she leaves, uh, ever the playful. Uh, Gilba. You head over to um, let's call it the, the, the Pickled Fish. Okay. One of the other inns that he happens to work at. Sure. This one is an actual respectable inn. Uh, usually nothing very, very terrible happens there. Mm -hmm. um, we're about into the second week at this point. Sure. Um, and Bazo is seemingly entertaining only one person at this moment. Okay. What does Kuzumayo look like right now? Um, shoot, I meant to get that picture while we were on break. Thank <laughs> you so things. No, there we go. <laughs> uh, oh. Nice. <laughs> Pictures. Yeah, be him. A. Uh, Is that a halfling? Yes. No. Okay. No. A gnome, even shorter. No. Three with foot a three. Gnome foot. Gnome something. Gnome male fighter. Okay. okay. So describe him with a few more words. Um. Well, it's like short, spiky brown hair, about three foot three, holding a normal sized rapier, which is <laughs> this big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Clark can relate. Loose. Leather armor, uh, beard, blue eyes, 
So a little bit shorter than uh, Bazo, I think. Right. Uh, yeah, three three. Yeah. So okay. a little on the short end, I think, for a gnome. Well, he'll he'll let them finish whatever business they got going. Um, and you see Clark walk in. You know Clark. <laughs> mm. Clark has been dis- <laughs> yeah. described. We know what he looks like. Um, he could make an insight check. Mm, yeah. Because sure. Casual insight check. All right. It's an eight. Oh look, it's a new PC. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I have that's a new glow. That special about it? PC glow. Is that eight glow? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any answers. I'm gonna say there might be, there's something <laughs> you could that you might have picked up on, but nope. Oh, nope. that's okay. Okay. Happily Looking around. And you see Clark at the door. I don't know if there's any reaction to that. Um, well, I think there was a small one, okay. but he didn't pick up on okay. it. Um, the question is, um, does a 20 pick up on it? Yes, it does. Uh, so, Bazo, uh, seeing your kind of momentary distraction from his... Recognition. Yeah, well... It's like, I know him. Bazo's used to picking up on different things, and he's yeah. been kind of been holding on to this... Kind of a monologue because I don't think Kuzumaya necessarily reacted <laughs> too much of what he was saying. No, uh, uh, and plus I actually got her name Brina. Oh, Brina, sorry, Brina the Stabber, because apparently gnomes like to name themselves that way. So they do, they do. Yep. Um, then uh, is that the name you gave to Bazo? Yes. Okay. Um, but seeing that reaction, kind of looks over, sees you at the door. Ah, Clara, come on over. Clark, I'd right? like to meet Brina. Brina's Brina. a new um, associate, green in almost every way except skin tone, I think. Uh, but uh, someone who has been very interested in meeting you. It seems as though your reputation precedes you, which I think is kind of interesting because I don't think I've ever seen you try at any sort of reputation. You really do need to get some sort of, I don't know, describable trait. I mean, some people have called the, you the half-orc, but honestly, there's more than one half-orc around. It is descriptive, though. That it is. That it is. Nice to meet you. You've taken a few days off, and I've respected your days off. I understand that you've also met up with an old friend. Yeah, that's, thank you for that. Uh, that's what I do. I make connections. And now I'm making another one. And asking a bit of a favor of you. All right. Brina here is, um, well, green, as I've already admitted. Sure. Brina looks at his hands. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, it's not my policy to train people that often. Haven't done it in a decade, at least. But you seem to be... At an interesting point in your life. And so I thought, aha, I have a solution to more than one problem and also an opportunity. I would like you to train young Brina here in the finer ways of, um, well, maybe not just stabbing things. Okay. Brina seems to be a little um, naive. And I'd like to have some of that rubbed off. Not in a terrible way. I'm not asking you to create a monster here. But someone who might be a little bit more um, Three months savvy. later. <laughs> There's a certain uh, Quanian dwarf um, that I hold so dear to my heart. Um, have you cleared that with him that I can teach? Um... Yes, I work for you, but I also work for him. <laughs> Not directly. Okay. Maybe I need to make an inquiry, but I'm sure they won't mind. All right. Well, as long as you think so, that's good enough for me. I'm willing to take that wager. Okay. Now, our business for the moment, Brina, is completed, but I look forward to hearing more of your skill and uh, employing you from time to time. If you, yeah, sorry, if you need, I can look for someone to fix your vision problem. Well, vision problem? I, I you see fairly clearly. Call me green. Ah, uh, it's uh, 
There's an expression that more experienced people might be more familiar with, but I understand that your your facilities with the intricacies of linguistic trappings may be somewhat limited. You can make another insight check if you want to. <laughs> uh, I'm not here. Brina's getting a little uh, tired of people talking down to him. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Let's go. In this particular case, it's weird because it's another gnome, but the gnome is standing on a table. So literally talking down to Brina at this point. Now, if you excuse me, I have business all over town. Ta-ta. Bye. <laughs> what day was this on, how, by the way? It's the middle of the second week. Okay. So it may sound a weird. How weird is or how how this may sound weird. How aware is Clark of just like is he like always looking out for things that are odd? Oh, he's aware, but he's not like he's not because overly vigilant as he needs to be. I'm just wondering he might get an int check too. Or investigation check, sorry. Um not yet. Okay. Doing things is what prompts things rather than passive at this point. Clark also like notices people's postures, and you need to be in situations to notice those things. Yeah. So mm. he'll he'll suss you out over time. Uh, before Bozo hey. steps out the door, he does turn back, mm. and I do believe you need this. Um, call it an intuition, or maybe an old friend's prompting. All right. I think this will do you good. Thanks. I guess. Mm -hmm. Ta-da! How much time does Zagus have away from Emerald? Hmm? How much time does Zekas have away from Emerald? Like during a normal day? Yeah. Like, or Not from, a lot. Okay. Um, he actually gets the cooks to deliver meals to his office, well, so you're not really even leaving at that point. Bathroom breaks. But for the most part, it is drilling you with magical theory, uh, kind of causing you to question some of the stuff you've already learned, as he has a very different point of view about the way the world works. Um, it's definitely true that he came from a different magical tradition than you did. Which one did he come from? Uh, well, specifically, uh, it would be... Uh, what do we want to call it here? Uh, evocation is his specialty. Okay. But more than that, it's... it's uh, even the few times you've talked to folks at the Emerald Pheasant and their teaching style, he would not be compatible with that as well. Okay. Uh, it's more of a... a um, Seeing the world as the flow of power, and one <laughs> must always be able to both respect that power and control it, and when possible, generate it. Okay. So where does Clark take Brina for I was just lesson? wondering, like, if, it, if there was a time at some point that I would be able to visit Buzzo and within these two weeks at the Elegant Pony, would I know that he's performing? Um... It would be possible, yeah. Well, why don't we go to a scene with that then? If we want to give give uh, Clark a moment to to readjust his his uh, suspicions, okay. um, you attend the Elegant Pony, which is actually remarkably empty these days. It had been filled with the followers of Paluxia, but they have all moved now to their own temple, and so none of them are actually staying there. Uh, Iro would have also uh, taken charge of making sure that the stables were correct for her as well as for everything else to give herself a bit more privacy and and uh, and uh, not so much privacy it's just protection mm -hmm. um, but the elegant pony it is somewhat empty there's only four people that Baza was attending to this evening mm -hmm. seems to be spouting off something about gravy okay. I'll just wait until he's done and offer was the, were the gold pieces supposed to be offered beforehand or afterwards uh, I guess forgets. Usually payment up front for a lot of things that Bozo does. Okay, so I'll approach with three GPs. Okay. Uh, you've got my attention. Now, if I had a drink, and he kind of snaps his fingers, and the, the barmaid comes over and delivers a, a rather large-looking stout, especially oh. in his smaller hands. Cover that as well. How much is it so I can keep track? Uh, that would be a couple of coppers. Okay. It's pretty cheap. If I'd known, I would have ordered something better. But this will do just fine. No worries. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm just wondering. I hear you you've moved up in station. Supposedly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> who'd you uh, hear that from? Oh, I hear things in the wind all the time. Of course. Anyway, um, I haven't. My friend Clark. I'm sure you're familiar with him. He no, just yes. walked away during the last. 
encounter we had with something seemingly sketchy. I I'm sure you heard about that as well. No, oh, yeah. I, I just have you heard from from him since then. I I, I haven't heard back from him. And I I'm why do you think that is? I don't know. No. I, I just was hoping that you had heard from him. Hmm, and it's strange. You haven't heard from him at all. No. Hmm, for how long now? It's been about a week uh, and a half. A week and a half. Oh, is that funny? Well, I believe he's found a friend. Hmm. So you have heard from him? Oh, I've heard from everyone. Well, of course. <laughs> is he okay? Well, he seems to be quite okay. Doesn't necessarily sleep in the best of beds, but not all of us aspire to that. Hmm doesn't even sleep in the warmest of blood beds, even given the chance. Hmm. But I believe he's still quite fine. Do you think he would contact his former friends, hopefully current friends, if need be? I, I don't know why he just walked away, but... Well, I think that's between you and him and a good stiff drink. Where can I meet him? Uh, do you want to meet him? I'd like to. I can make arrangements. He's not responding to any of my magical sendings. Something tells me that's not going to work. Why not? Did, did he speak to you about this, sir? I know a great many things, and I don't tell everybody everything. Hmm. But I can make an arrangement for a meeting, if you'd like. That would be much appreciated. How much? Well, I like a person who gets right to the point. Let's just say... Let's just say I'll ask you for something later. As a friend. What kind of thing later? Well, I don't know yet. It'll be much more fun to find out then, won't it? Fun for you or fun for me? Oh, probably both of us, I'm sure. <sighs> he warned me not to deal with you, I can see why now, but I am... He warned you? Legitimately oh, oh, worried about oh, him, so... That's so delightful. What? I love when a good reputation comes in handy. That's all. Hmm. <laughs> I must tell him about that. Yeah, I have a feeling I screwed up, but I, I, I do want to ensure that he is okay. Well, I'm sure that I can probably make a meeting very quickly. How would you like? How soon would you like to speak with him? I think he's a little busy at the moment, but I'm sure soon. Preferably be, be, as soon as possible. I, I. Well, you seem to know everything about how I've become an apprentice. Oh, not everything. Let me assure you. Go ahead. Doors. But I'm increasingly busy right now. So yes, I before I get sent are. on some mission far away, I have no idea when these things might happen. As soon as possible would likely be the best. That's a terrible problem. I'm sure I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if it's a problem or a blessing yet. So far it's been a blessing. I hope it remains that things. way. I'm, le I'm learning things so much faster. I'm sure you are. Yeah. He's quite um, an interesting fellow. Do you know him? By reputation, mostly. Yeah. But reputations are very interesting things. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, I just mainly want to connect with my friend. I, I am worried about him. Well, then. And he grabs the stein kind of with both hands. To friends, then. To friends. I mean, I'll grab my own stein too. I'll order one if I have to. Mine is two more he, uh, he uh, proceeds to, and this is one of those interesting things that happens in fantastical universes with fantastical people. Because, on a scientific level, there's probably no way that that entire stein would fit entire his entire body without at least taking a break. <laughs> but Bazo makes it happen, and it may just be through practice, yeah. or a hollow leg. It's hard to tell. I would like to do something that might affect later on in okay. after that. Um, I am going to try to scry on Clark. Okay. Um, I'm going to take out the stein and all the daggers and everything that I have that would be of Clark. Um, yeah, he's yeah, basically be a wisdom save because he's familiar. It's minus five. Uh, with items, it's minus four. Yeah, so minus nine total. It's a minus nine. Depending on what the ring does, if that it does not. It. It, it shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, I like. Ba base. And you know nothing about yeah. the ring. 
Oh yeah, no. Um, I know even less. <laughs> I, I play player wise. Yeah. Check just to save time, right. basically. Where the okay here. Okay. Um, so, the scrying is a a reactive spell, right? So. It is not you making a targeting roll. It is a save. Yes. Yeah. And what did you say the save was? A wisdom save. Uh, what's the DC? Uh, the DC would be 17 with a minus 9. Penalty to it, yeah. So the minus 9 penalty is from? Uh, from the spell itself. Yeah. It's the save if it, a person's familiar. It's oh, minus I see. It's okay. minus 4 because I have some of his stuff. Oh, that's weird. Normally they will change the DC and not the, the save. That's That's kind of... I'll have to figure or out. Or save, save modif modifier. No, I, I agree. It's just that normally they would modify the DC rather than changing the other one, so that's why I'm a little yep. confused. All right, so uh, your DC again, sorry, was 17. 17. So if you want to roll a wisdom saving throw. Sure. 10. 10? Okay. So minus 9. Uh, so minus 9. <laughs> even, without one. Minus <laughs> yeah, even without the minus 9. Yeah, even without that. Um, and so. I don't know if you are aware of it. No, nope. don't think so. Uh, On a fail, the spell creates an invisible sensor within ten feet of the target. You can see and hear through the sensor as if you were okay. there. Um, and what is your passive perception? Eighteen. Okay, make a perception check. Sure. Uh, with this advantage, sorry. Sure. Uh, perception. Uh, Twenty-six. Okay. Uh, wow. Wait, no, uh, uh, 24. Not 24, yeah. with his advantage, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, you and, cause, uh, you and uh, Brina are, great, we got a Brina and a Brina. And a Brina. 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 And a Brina, sorry, <laughs> great. And a Brenda somewhere, I don't know where Brenda's Brenda the bear. Yeah. Uh, you and uh, uh, Brina are walking along. Where are you going? We're just meander around the town. Okay. Following people, not followed beyond being followed, uh, causing a ruckus, getting away. Okay. Chat, unlocking random doors, locking random doors, that sort of thing. Why don't each of you make a stealth check just to sing sure. right there? Uh, stealth is a thing. Um, 23. 19. Okay. Um, he seems to be showing you some of the ways to hide, and uh, he's pretty good at it. Are we ever in the dark doing this, or are we in a lit area trying, doing stealth? Probably in multiple situations. Okay. Any and point a, we're and in the at dark, multiple heights, too. Uh, any point that we're in the dark, I go like this, and then he can't see me. Okay. It seems like uh, he takes to it very quickly. By the way... Do you wear the amulet, or is it in a pocket? Hmm. You probably wear it just to make sure that it doesn't get lost. Okay. So, after one of these lesson lessons where uh, Brina has been able to demonstrate that, yeah, they know their stuff. They've been, they're, they're not untrained or not unskilled. Mm. But a little rough around the edges. Um, language seems to be a little bit rougher. Um, you're not sure where this gnome grew up. But uh, it clearly wasn't in the tour because the, the accent is strange. Mm. Um, also, if he's if he's actually watching Brina doing things, then he might get an investigation check. I will put an investigation check on that one now. Right. Yes. Uh, natural one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so there he's are short. two things you notice. <laughs> there are two things you notice first yes. of all, and also you see that uh, you do see Clark kind of stepping out of the shadows. And there is a gnome you've never seen before stepping out as well. Uh, what you notice, however, uh, as you step out back out into the street and kind of doing it as nonchalantly as possible so people don't see you like suddenly, aha, I'm here, I was hiding. Mm. You see two things. One, um, looking over at Kuzumaya, or sorry, looking over at Brina, that's going to be a problem for a while. Uh, looking over at Brina, um, you see that they're wearing this this amulet around their neck um, on a on a gnome. It's actually fairly large um, for for what the what would normally be worn, but it seems to be worn there. And um, make a make a religion roll, which is going to be weird for you, but seven seven. Yeah. 
it it's weird because it's it's distinct and with purpose and it's not pretty it's actually but ugly in right. many ways uh, it also seems to be multiply, uh, multiple faces that are each, every time that, that Brina moves, it kind of switches to a different face and it looks entirely different every time it does. The other thing you notice is just behind Kuzum, uh, just behind Brina, you see this vague wobble in space around you. But that's about it. It looks about, about uh, chest height. It's circular, about, yeah, about yay big. Okay. Uh, and it's just kind of this weird wobble. Uh, Clark will look to Brina and say, is that you? Uh, make a perception check with disadvantage. Hmm. 16. 16? Yeah. Uh, with uh, him pointing it out, you kind of see the same wobble, but you have no idea what that is. I... That's not... They're Maybe looking the towards the this. center. Yep. Yeah. Um, can I, I make a does, perception check to see if I can tell I don't where they are? That, that, right that doesn't sure. look familiar to me. Okay. Gotta try to stay in the voice. Not 20. Not 20. So yeah. 27. Uh, you recognize the corner of the building that they were just standing nearby. Yeah. Uh, it's actually the old uh, uh, storefront. Uh, which led down into the fake storefront. Uh, that led down into, into yes. the ground below. Uh, champion Goods, I believe yes. it was called. The other thing you notice is when the amulet moves, and you kind of also notice this amulet on on uh, Brina. I see everything. <laughs> the, the amulet moves and seems to move in and out of the clothing. Interesting. As though it's solid, but the clothing is not. Mm. Interesting. Brina's naked all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how far... Is Champion Goods from the Grove? Uh, it's cross town. It's cross town. Champion t Goods was closer to the center part of town, and and the uh, the estate itself is kind of on the almost on the outside of the city. Okay, um, I am going to turn into a bird that would be that like a common bird that people would see in the area. Okay. Flying rat. Like a sparrow. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to fly to Champion Goods. Okay. Uh, Are you going to maintain the spell at the same time? And... Yep. Um. Uh, it's ten minutes. Uh, so, and it moves with the target. Remaining within ten feet of it for the duration. So, I'm going to go to Clark. Okay. What do you guys, how do you guys react to it, or if at all? I'm so not aware of it's any not trying to kill us yet, so. No. We'll just go about our day. Does that happen to a lot? Scribing spells? No. But it's magic of some kind. As you move, you do see that it moves with you. Mm. There's nothing I can do to get rid of it, so. Mm. Just looking for a... Would a hawk stats work? Sure. Cool. We'll even say it was a hawk. Cool. A sparrow hawk. Therefore, I'm right still. Much um, less likely to be eaten by a bigger bird. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so I rolled a 22 on a stealth to imitate and not be noticeable. Okay. I'm just a regular hawk. Oh. Just a uh, regular he's hawk. He's got a just, headband, too. Just a regular <laughs> hawk. Uh, so I'm going to go... Uh, a hawk has a fly speed of 60 feet, so I have a fly speed of 70 feet. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to go there and follow him around for five hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what are uh, Clark and uh, Brina doing for the next more, five more hours? More basics. Okay. Like, so probably a little bit of climbing. Some a climbing. A little bit of some... uh, following particular people. Yeah. What about the the uh, the softer charisma side of it? Are you doing um, the get to know what that person's home address is, or a lot of like uh, recon and infiltration related stuff? Not so much the actual social stuff, okay. As opposed to like not actually physically dealing with people, but just being around them enough to sort of pick up on cues and stuff. Okay, make a uh, performance check, sure. and you make a uh, let's call this an acrobatics check. Fourteen. Fourteen. Twelve. Twelve. It's a little hard to understand what Clark is saying, but you've already seen that Clark knows what they're doing. 
Um, <laughs> and you're having a little bit of a time because um, <coughs> people move very quickly in the city. And sometimes they like move in large, weird ways. And every I once like in a while, there's an open, like just an open wide street. And it feels a little bit tough to kind of both find your cover in that street, but also you feel almost exposed in that street. Um, there's only I'm going to do with reference to the Orby thing mm -hmm. um, is uh, he will attempt to walk over to it and he will say something in a language that you don't understand but sounds like the black speech from Lord of the Rings. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 That, that so well was, that, No, you wouldn't actually. <laughs> really? Nope. Well, they really I can't tell you yet. Mm. Um, it's a secret. But I, I imagine it secret. sounds something like that thing where Gandalf was saying it and everything starts to grow dark a little mm. bit. And, I mean, not that's that anyone understands that, but he's, nope. I'm guessing. Okay, cool. Uh, he's basically there. Go away. Okay. Um, is it, do you wish to leave that? I can make us invisible. I don't think it's necessary. So it, it would follow you guys for ten sure. minutes. Yeah, we'll just say at that at that moment mm. it vanishes. Mm. There, problem solved. Mm. I do know that was a ten minute that. limit of the spell, basically, when you yeah. got there. Yep. Yeah. Um, but you did see this weird impression of this this gnome. Uh, make another perception check, actually. It's really hell for him, anyway. Uh, fourteen twenty one. Twenty one. Once the gnome gets really close to the sensor. You can definitely tell it's an illusion. My island is far from here. I know not where. Does it have a jungle on it? No, it is mountains, okay. forest. Then I don't have to hate you. Thank you. Hmm. I was hoping not to be hated. I'd like you to point out for me the direction, the best target um, for uh, a bit of coin um, in the next uh, block over. I'll get you started. Okay. One more thing that Elzera does notice, and you kind of had seen a glimpse of it, but then the, then the spell had cut out just as you were starting to pay attention to it. Yeah. But I will say as you're flying around and flying overhead and watching them, and especially probably paying a little more attention to Brina at this point. Yeah, I just want to know where he is. Yep. And yep. But the thing that catches your eye is as it seems that Clark is speaking to the person and then they go off and do things, mm -hmm. and that amulet kind of moving around, the thing that strikes you the most is at one point as it kind of turns and you can see that it's kind of rolling a bit as the uh, as the gnome turns mm -hmm. there's a something that looks very familiar to you in this face that turns up it's curled and twisted and wound around itself it's sinister strangely um, but the glyph that you recognize means speak. It is a druidic glyph, but warped and twisted and confusing. And basically what my plan is, is that I want to leave something for Clark to find. Okay. Uh, so basically I'm going like well, well, he's training stuff. Just <laughs> <laughs> bluff. Transform into Damn a pigeon. It. No, yeah. specifically a pigeon. Why? I've got plans. <laughs> uh, no, but like I, I see kind of what he's doing. He's trying to teach this person for some Somehow, reason. Yeah. No, uh, no, no knowledge of why, but he's trying to train someone. Whatever. Um, I'm going to put the resin seed thing. Okay. Uh, just somewhere very obvious that he would find. So you're going to switch out of the form, yeah. take that out of your pack, uh, switch back. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, it has a note attached to it. Okay. Make a um, make a stealth check. Which stats would you like me to do this? Using? Which form are you doing it in? Because so, it's easy enough for you to go and, and put yourself out of out of view. But when you transform it back into the eagle form, presumably that's when you're going to leave the thing. 
or you want to go and land as yourself, put the thing, and then fly away. So it's up to you. Because it's... Okay, cool. Uh, I will use the hawks. Okay. Just because I'm turning out so, of the hawk and then back into the hawk. Okay, so, so the hawk's grabbing, grabbling onto this statue yeah. with the note already presumably attached. And yeah. then you fly down. Let's make your stealth roll to put it in the right place. So, uh... 21. Okay. 21, nice. Or uh, no, 22. Oh, well, that's terrible. Uh, <laughs> as you gracefully fly ahead, and you can see they're getting involved now in kind of really casing a joint, mm -hmm. and you can see the next one they're going for, as Clark kind of pointed out, and then you see, and you're kind of suggesting this is the building you want to look, make look for, look for entrances, what you're doing. And so you're kind of moving around, and... You're looking. You realize that Clark is not the forefront of most of these, yeah. um, but you realize the way that he's watching, um, he will notice this very easily from one perspective. I, I would have watched them for a while. I have five hours. So yep. Yep. I I would have watched them for a while and figured that out. Okay. Um, and the note says, "I'm sorry for turning you into a kitten. I did not know what else to do. I'm really sorry." Give this back when you forgive me. We can figure this uh, out. This uh, it's mysteries. Yeah, and you yeah. see the statue. You recognize it immediately All right. with that note attached. Clark will. Uh... Uh, and then she goes back to doing whatever she was doing to try to cleanse this. Okay. Um. Uh, Brina. So the, you said basically on the next block. Yeah. There? Brina seems really shortish sighted. Uh oh. That's because she's three foot three. I, I'm assuming we're in the day. This is during the day, yeah. Uh, so he's squinting. How, uh, how, far do your, how far do your eyes see things? Not well during the day. Okay, how, how far ahead, though, during the day? At noon? Mm. I don't know exactly. He basically has disadvantage. I don't know what that exactly will do. Yeah. Technically, he can see the same distance yeah. as the harder. Yeah, yeah, passive perception wise, it's negative five to your yeah. passive. So yeah, for, for a distance, it would mean anything that's beyond uh, immediate range would yeah. be would be feet. would be impossible yeah. to see. Well, effectively, it would knock his uh, passive perception down to eleven, which would be normal person. So. Whatever that means, basically, I'm assuming it's he can see the shapes and the colors move around, but it's hard for him to pick out individual yeah. people okay. there. Man, if I take my glasses off, I'm right there with him. And I don't think normal person's what I'm seeing, though. Right. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> I think it's more than disadvantage in my case. I'm going to make a suggestion to you. This might not be your. Uh... Does all the light. If this was dark, I could see farther. Okay. Well, during the day. Uh, you're going to have to get friendly with people. And at nighttime, uh, then act as you would want to. If you're gonna, if you're gonna be doing this kind of work, you're gonna have to be comfortable uh, using other people's eyes for you, if need be. There is something I need to tell you. Well, I'm glad we're uh, having these frank conversations on day one. Go ahead. Uh -huh. <laughs> I appreciate what you you teach, but that is not exactly why I wanted to an ba introduction. Bazo's never he never says one thing, so I assume there was another catch. Uh, I am not here for Bazo. Uh, all right. I. Why did you leave your friends? Because I had a disagreement. Mm -hmm. Call it a crisis of faith. Are they bad people? Yes. But that's besides the point. Bad in what way? How about I introduce you? You can make your own decisions on that. What I'm going to teach okay. you is going to take time. I need to get back to these people and get back to work and make some money. You might as well tag um, along. Um, 
Where have Elzera and Zacchaeus mostly been spending their time? Library. Okay, grove. that's what I figured. Uh, your friend is probably at her grove. Do you have any ill will towards my companions? No, no, no. So, because if they're targets, I'm, I'm probably just going to kill you right now. <laughs> no, you're... <laughs> hey. You and your friends saved me. Yeah. We'll continue walking. Pick up the statue. Continue walking. It's slightly sticky to the touch. Which it wasn't when you only initially had it. <laughs> it's like, oh man, druids. <laughs> <laughs> right? That wasn't... Sure, okay. Yeah. It's bird spit. Uh, I look around for an alleyway. Plenty of alleyways within sight. Um, it's a fairly thick city. May we... Get out of sight for a moment. There's something I wish to show you. Somewhere you feel safe. I understand. That's a big... Feeling that people are after you. All right. Mm, duck into an alley. All right. There's plenty of alleys nearby, and you know the area well enough. We'll find, oh. a, we'll find one that's strewn with detritus, so it doesn't. it's not easily noticed from the outside. Sure. Um... Mr. Detritus is lying in her and Um He will obviously cast a detect magic spell because there's signs and things to say and whatnot. It sounds right. very much like what he would have done a bunch. All right. um, except a little more musical. Also, I forgot to mention he has a drum on his hip. Okay. Uh, and he quickly like, just beats off a little uh, pattern and uh, um, praising. Casts, uh, basically, yeah, casts detect magic just to check the area. Just okay. okay. He, You'll notice all of Clark's he's looking bells and whistles. Mm. Yeah. There's a shiny ring on his finger. And, There's a, a, and a shining dagger. A shiny dagger. Uh, oh. And a cloak. He hasn't given that up yet. Yeah. He looks at the ring. New ring. Yeah. It's the only thing he kept. No, that's new. Uh, the ring is the, new. Ring the cloak is he kept. Yeah, the cloak yeah. he kept. Yeah, yeah the cloak. Um, oh, yeah. Um... Oh, in the box. That's true. He has That's a box. box on his hip, which yeah. is uh, which is magical. Yeah. Um, I guess I assume it was on your hip. I don't know why. I, know, I assume it's on his hip. Huh. New ring. Um, I. How do you are part orc? Uh, part orcs not uh, are not seen many places. How do they treat you? Who's they? And it's mostly orc, thank you. Uh, my apologies. Um, your well, I guess former allies. I think they're still allies. Okay. It, they do not hate you for... No, they're a bunch of weirdos anyway. <laughs> He actually gives you kind of a knowing nod. Uh, I kind of get the impression you're a weirdo too, which is why I'm not afraid to show them to you. Well, I would not be weird at home, but uh, um, his image shimmers for a bit and then shrinks significantly. And... Uh, I do have a picture of this. These are all pictures I cannot show online because there's stuff that I've got. A little over two feet tall. For those of you watching at home, you can ignore that. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> can I look well, at well, it? Part of that. The, the weird yeah. thing is, like, as the printout goes, it's just twice that height. It's not that much bigger. Yeah. Yes. It's literally about L this, size. this tall. Yeah. Um, That's new. Uh, yeah, he's got like blue metallic scales, uh, shiny black horns and, and claws. Um, also, he's wearing a purple hat with fur around it. Um, yeah. And then, uh, after a bit, he changes to... A small orc, half orc girl. Hmm. Small? Three foot two. Very so. small then. Yes. Okay. Um. Is it? 
Do you have a problem? My kind are not liked here, I think. Some of your kind may have been killing people here. They have right to be suspicious. Yes. The Clark has a hand on his dagger. <laughs> um, actually, the only weapons you'd see on him would have been a couple of daggers. Um, Big fancy sword went away? Um, yes. Okay. Actually, I'm going to say that way it probably would have been a dagger because uh, the mini that I got, Ooh. I got back... He had a rapier, ah, yes. but he is not starting it with one. Right. So, right, um, or any of the weapons okay. that they're actually showing them it, here. It'll grow out over time. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> um, it gets it gets smaller and uh, um, it's cool. So, there's something interesting going on. Mm. Yeah, you and your friends. You do not know this. You two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And that under the city, you rescued me. You freed me from their control. Right. The illithid, the mind flayers. Okay. Tall yeah, I did, tentacles. I, I get the impression. I was bound to their service. Sucks, don't it? For years, no. I had no free will. I hope you do now. Look around again. I do for now. All right. You may call me Ironbound. It's okay. I'll call you Brina. Um, and when he, said, when he says Ironbound, he puts out his left leg, and you can see just for a moment... Uh, Around it, there's a uh, shackle uh, with no chain, just the yep. circular part. You and your friends saved me. I wish to repay you. All right. Now you're talking my language. Uh, and he'll head back towards the exit uh, of the alley and say, I believe uh, I have been watching you and your friends to see what kind of people you are. I hope that this is not something that you would find too untrustworthy. Or a bunch of grave robbers and thieves. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Librarians and scholars. <laughs> Thank you. Do me a favor. When you meet them, be as honest with them as you are with me now. I'm sure you'll be fine. It's a bit of relief on his face at the moment. Thank you. I wish to be so. Uh, if I may say I I've he looks around the city I have little experience with your way of life where I come from is not like this another feeling I do like Elzera's Grove that okay. is not a euphemism <laughs> all right um Maybe if we get the band back together, you can see it. No, I, I have been there. Oh, well, there you go, then. I do, do you know any other magics? Oh, yes. Uh, my apologies. Um, I am... Uh, uh, I believe it is called a bard and a hunter. Okay. Can you... Uh, he does a little riff on the drum. Can you reach out to people and communicate with them? No. All right, well, let's head over to the library and we can start there. Ah, uh, I do not like the library. 
I don't either. But it's the first step. Mm. As you wish. All right. We'll head over to the library. Okay. Um, in my little jaunts around watching people, did I notice that the library seemed to have like anything like uh, illusion killing anti magic zones at the doors or anything? He usually would he would have like physically tried to sneak in. Yeah. Anyways, but uh, uh, n- not as such. Um, the pro- the best chance for you probably because you can do invisibility right mm-hmm. would have been to slip in when the gate was open um, they do seem to be checking people they have this strange orb that they're using at the front gate now to check people as they come in uh, mm-hmm. and they do have double the number of guards there as well so they do seem to have uh, uh, some checks but you were able to sneak in before um, one thing I will say, what I have built here, and I'll switch to the overhead map. We're probably not going to be using this tonight, but just so the people at home can actually see it. And I will remember, ha ha, without necessarily needing it. Uh, this is actually the estate, as you may have guessed. Oh yeah, I've um, been pointing to this, not thinking about the fact that you guys can't see it. Yeah. So this <laughs> is what the estate looks on the inside of the walls. The front gates are 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 heavy and rusted, uh, so they're hard to move over, open more than a few inches at the moment. Um, you find the estate to be extraordinarily overgrown uh, to the point where while you can see what looks like a road there, no wagon can ever pass on that road. There are massive thick uh, branches that have fallen across it. You could, there's roots exposed everywhere. Uh, there is a central part, part there, what looks like a, some sort of stone uh, building at one point that's completely crumbled down, the, the round part in the middle. Um, the main estate once was two floors. Now the second floor sits upon the very earth of the, of the first floor. It's crushed inward. Massive trees are lining those couple of areas. And you find in, the, in that back corner uh, a grove that has been overgrown, but is a grove of, yep, a grove of uh, fruit trees. Hmm. Um, they are still bearing fruit, but they have definitely gone wild and they're starting to intermingle. And you can see that the fruit is not doing well. They're, it's too overgrown. <clears throat> um, in the back corner here, you have the remains of stables. Um, looks like the stones are still there, but the wood has rotted away. Um, make a nature check, just as a, a part of your investigations. Mm, total 20? Yes, total 20. Okay. Um, there is a sense of decay in here, which is grand, and it's hard to overcome that. The, the air still smells musty. Even the light seems to dim as you get inward in this area, and partially as the trees themselves have grown into a canopy overhead. But there is distinctly sort of a sense of decay in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you go over to the trees, they're, they're rotting. Uh, the, the fruit on the rotting fruit of the ground is instantly smell uh, smells. Um, but you kind of, with the fact that you've been to a grove before, you start to see some of the elements of it. Uh, some of the base stone that was used in the uh, stables mm-hmm. actually formed probably one of the pillars of uh, either Marius or Marina at one point. So there may be more to it at that point. And at strategic points around, you're finding uh, evidence of menhirs that were that are basically standing stones that were buried or knocked over and buried and starting to find that. The other thing you're starting to notice, though, and I won't make you roll for this because of, you know, per- perception goddess over there, but one of the other things you notice is the trees are moving. And there's a tolerance for your presence, but you get an overwhelming disdain for your presence as well. So I would at that point, the next day, once I notice that, the next day I will cast uh, Speak With Plants. Okay. Once I get the chance to. Um, by the way... What happens with my sleeping the rest of the time? Am I, do I still have that one point of exhaustion? You find that without her tea, you get a non-restful sleep. Mm-hmm. And those nights you do without the tea, you do not retain your spells, hit points, or your, uh, and, you don't, and you actually gain a point of exhaustion. Okay. So after a few, few days, it's almost impossible to sleep without her tea. Uh, yeah. And she's growing increasingly worried about this, because this is not good. That's terrifying. Yeah. So I would say I would have gone one night because she is paranoid. So mm-hmm. she would have two levels of exhaustion. Okay. Uh, and then she would have asked for it consistently just until we really figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, 
just for that. Uh, and yeah, she would try to cast talk yeah, to plants just other and to try to chat with some of the okay. trees. What we will do is, uh, let's see, we're looking at the time. We will pick up with their, f- well, are you going that same day? Yeah. Okay. And it's we'll, likely we'll do we'll that particular try day. to find the grove as well that same okay. day. That's what he thinks a tabaxi looks like. Okay. Uh, we'll get into these amusing pictures later. Uh, yeah, you go to the, 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 are you just going to the front gate? Yeah, we'll go to the front gate. We're not going to bother going in. We're just okay. going to call for him. And you do see the double guards there. Um, they yeah. ask your business and you simply, uh, one of them recognizes you and, and kind of Do you nods. know what I want? I don't want any books. Um, this is one of the days where you're actually on your own calendar. Uh, Emeril is not in the library. He's actually over at the Temple of Mnemosyne still. Uh, and a, uh, a one of the guards comes forward. Uh, the half-orc, Clark, is here to see you. Should we do two half-orcs? Really? Doesn't right. recognize the other one. Uh-huh. I'm on my way. He's about a friend. So I'll... Is, is it about a friend? It, it, what? What do you say? Did you say it he's was a brought bit? a friend? Okay, he's brought a friend. Um, all right, I'll make my way down, expecting the friend to be all zero or something. And you see the Clark there with a very small uh, half orc girl. Probably, you know, judging from Clark's age, it's not inconceivable. No, she's probably like that. It's in human terms, like daughter? a six-year-old or something in size. <laughs> Greetings. Hey. I'm assuming uh, your my message from Bozo was received. No. No. God damn it. Question. Now I probably owe him a favor. You're always going to owe him a favor. Yeah. That's how it works. Anyway. The girl nods sagely. Um, <clears throat> uh, can I help you? I, I'm glad to hear from you, you again. you got some time? Yes. Are you, are you speaking through the, are the gates or are you actually coming out? Clark's not going in. Are you actually coming out? I'm like speaking like in the gate. Would you like okay. to come in? No. The girl shakes her head too. Well then, to the guards. I'll be back shortly. What's Thank your you. passive perception? Hmm? Passive perception is probably like 11 or 12. Okay, never 12. Mind. Never mind. 12, 22. Yeah. <laughs> I have a friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I... Hey, how are you? Hello, Zarkus. <laughs> <laughs> have we met? They're not good with voices. Not directly. Um, I'm assuming you've only told her good things, right? Right. Anyway, off to the bar we go. Yeah. I don't care do how that. old she is. Let's... Um, actually, I was wondering if we might be able to go to the Grove. The Grove. You got a, a little bit of time? Well, yes, but the one also was just beginning to restore? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Let's. I, mean, I don't know how many there are, so maybe that one. Mm-hmm. Do I know where the grove is, by the way? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the location is pretty well known, okay. mm-hmm. um, especially after because um, they would have made a, a public announcement that they're right. going to try to restore this grove, and um, it's it's it get you get a few passers by that look at it, but a lot of people scurry away pretty quickly once they've seen it. It's something that bothers a lot of people. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know where it is, just All on right. the other side of the city. All right, I'll accompany you. All right. So what brings you back? You left abruptly and never answered any messages. Yeah, that happened. That hey, I'm getting that over it. doesn't answer my question, though. What, why the sudden disappearance? I had some spiritual conflicts, we'll say. They're being mm. addressed. I, I'm just making like the not buying it face, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Who is your friend? Well, perhaps uh, they can introduce themselves to you. Hey. As we walk. Okay. Mm. I'm assuming you came in right. to fetch me for a uh, purpose. Yeah, come with me for one second, and I'll like grab Zachas and pull him into an alley. <laughs> you okay. could just ask me. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Date number three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nosh stands there looking at the alleyway. Nosh, do, what? Do, do. That's this. That's this one's name. I've heard like three different names for that character. I like mm-hmm. out of game. <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Get to it. Oh, I thought you just pulled him into the alleyway yeah, and away you. from me. And, oh, okay. And you. Okay. Okay. So for all going, it's like yeah. <laughs> do you actually what grab me to pull me in? No. Okay. That would look kind of neat, though, because you would have had to grab like. 
down to like yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Just yeah. Sure. Um, what's what's going on? I'm assuming if I haven't if I haven't been stabbed yet, everything yeah, is still okay. Things are going great. Um, in what was your purpose at the library? Do you have a special request? You. I got you now, so I got me, I my knowledge, my <laughs> actions, the things I can do, um, breaking into people's brains. I want you possibly to in the back of Zacchaeus's brain somewhere. Hmm? You've been deep into your studies, yeah. and you're getting routine used to the library's security measures. But then you sort of realize there's somebody here I don't real I recognize, and Clark didn't go through the security procedures at the library. So there's a small note of panic probably in the back of your mind as you realize the shapeshifters are still active in the city. Yeah. I know, he proceeds. Right <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> as the bag goes over your head. Yeah. And You're lucky to get a bag. <laughs> I planned this all with Pat. And but were they like at the gate? But Which sure. means they haven't... No. What? We didn't, right. go, we, we didn't go, go in. in. We, we didn't, were outside the exactly. Game. So it's like, how would I know that they've been like? Yep. But that's when you start to put it all together, going, wait, no, they, they didn't go through it, and I'm really bad at this whole security oh, thing. Right. As people have been taken, and uh oh, and then, and then, what does Nosh do? I got a crap and in, uh, uh-huh. uh, insight roll, so I don't realize you're scared. Um, <laughs> do it. If you're going to be honest. What's going on? Hello, Zacchaeus. Give it a moment. Hello. Do we have we met? No, but you saved my life. What? It's also kind of a gruff, hoarse voice coming from a little girl. Do I recognize the voice? I'm assuming it's like I'm, I, I'm assuming it's magic. Uh, well, there could be a lot of chain smoking. Work children grow yeah. differently than everybody else true. does. It's true. We it's have a three pack a day. <laughs> it's a rough life. I'll have we don't have breakfast. Um, we have a pack a day. It's a, please do not shout. Oh, we can't. Sh- and uh, we're in a library. <laughs> Shouting is not in my nature. I think she has a headband too. Um, she pulls the headband off, and there's a warp. To an even smaller little lizard person holding a poofy purple fur rimmed hat in his hand. My name is. Well, you may call me Ironbound. And again, you can see the single shackle around one ankle. Yeah. And to be clear, it is a blue cobalt standing in front yeah. of you. Yes. Uh, metallic blue cobalt uh, with kind of aqua eyes. Um, Pleased to meet you. Thank you for what you have done. I'm still not 100% sure what I have done, but uh, you, you say to call you Ironbound. Is that your actual name or just a representation of the piece of metal on your ankle? How about you, yes. give, how about you give him the benefit of a doubt? Well, I am so far. I... He's obviously not trying to kill me, nor are you, so I'm assuming in, I am in moderately my... good company. In my culture, uh, where I come from, your your uh, your real name is for your family and others close to you. Everyone else calls you by a name that the town feels fits. Your most recent activities. Hmm. Since my town is not here, I have named myself Ironbound, for that is what I have been for several years until you freed me from the Mind Flayers and their Beholder. I don't. Before this, hmm? I was known as Four Steps. I don't entirely understand, but I can accept your request to be named Ironbound. Uh, there was a lake how? <coughs> at four steps. Oh. At any rate... And now it, like, flashes back. He, how did you come through? Back through the uh, lake portal. It was closed. I didn't see I did out. not. I was further back in the tunnels. They... 
They controlled my mind and used me to build things for them. Traps. Other things. Was that the one you stepped into? Quite possibly. Hmm. My apologies. Well, I see things can be forgiven it in worked. this crowd. That's worthy of I praise do in a weird kind work. of way. I, I, I have, I've never seen you or... Our, our friend here wants to repay the debt of his freedom, mm-hmm. and he wants to thank the entire group. So I'm getting the band back together to do that. You're welcome. You don't necessarily owe us a lifetime of service, but... No, but I... If you have information, I'd be willing to hear it. I wish to He wants to say thanks. Let's get everybody together. He can say thanks, and then we can make stuff from there. I cannot return home, so I wish to help you until I can. Where is your home? I do not know. It is an island... Does it have a name? Uh, let's see. I had them here. If you can give me the Here's the one thing too, listen, we call I it have Shmay, but you to, call it... Hmm? I have access to all the records well, I know in the what, city of Batur. I can find out where your home is. We called it... Cargo Pulsar Thicca Thicca Yeah. Carthel. It means Platinum Mountain Home. We'll, we'll get everyone... I do not know what right. others call it. So that's U X A T H I C A K A R T H O. I don't know if you can spell actually. There you go. Uh, right there. That's not the canonical spell. Oh, 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 hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> close. Um, as you lean in to understand it, I only had make, make a perception one check. letter wrong. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Make a perception check. Okay. Six. Okay. But I spell it like with uh, one letter off. Yeah. And uh, in case you rec- recognize it, that's actually in um, Draconic. I, I don't have Draconic. No. Somebody has Draconic. I do. Mm-hmm. Remember but somebody he talking might, to He might have recognized it from her and yeah. uh, what's your face. I just kind of like wrote it down on a, scrap, on a, like a scrap piece of paper. We wrote it down phonetically in yeah. common. With one letter wrong. Um, it puts the hat back on and changes into a tiny elf girl. How does this work? The hat. It's a magic hat. Well, yes, I, I've, gathered that, I've, gathered that, that, I've gathered that it was magic, but I'd like to invest that, I, investigate that someday, if you don't mind. Um, Perhaps another day? Sure, it is. Yes, uh, what's the with had. the urgency? Mm-hmm. Nobody's going anywhere. Oh, and now I'm only I'm, I'm sure six, I can so find it's a little else. Oh, I, somewhere for I, I'm trying to do this charity, charity. for someone right now. Hmm? Trying to do this charity for someone right now, I'd like to do it expediently. Is it for me? Did Bazo give you my request? I haven't heard anything from Bazo. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm sure I will. I, I made a request <coughs> to meet with you. Because I was worried. Oh, well, I appreciate the worry. Oh, hmm? the other thing I forgot to mention was under the uh, leather armor is a little girl's yellow sundress. Oh, very nice. Anyway, what is this charity? We're going to present him to the group. He's going to say thanks, and we'll move on. That's it? Yeah. No effort. Super simple. No murder, no lying, no backstabbing. Not all rewards are monetary. That's great, because those are easier. Right, shall we find Elzara then? Please. I'm assuming she's here somewhere? Yeah. Have you been in contact with her? Or? grove nearby? Yeah. I thought we were in the grove. No, nope, we're headed to an Okay. Yeah. So we are heading off towards yeah. the grove. Yep. We get to the grove. Right. Ding, ding, it takes you uh, ding, ding. 20 minutes to walk across the city to the edge of the grove. Um, Zach, as you've heard about the place, but never actually spied it with your own eyes. Now that you do, it's kind of like you meant to water someone's plants while they were away on vacation, and then you realize you go back to their apartment after it's been two weeks, and you go, oh, Oops. well, that's what happens when you don't water plants properly. There's a sense of sort of this, this sense of neglect and decay. The walls themselves seem to be fairly tall, uh, almost 15 feet at points, although the, the walls themselves are crumbling a bit. Um, and you can see the, the, the crests of trees just above the walls as well, from your, from your perspective. Um, but it feels, <coughs> it feels probably pretty dirty inside. So keep that in mind. The grove doors are open. The main gates are open. 
You're within the grove. You've been walking around. Uh, I'm not wearing any armor, uh, and I'm in like working, like I'm gardening clothes. Okay. Um, hair is pinned back, and I'm like actively working and probably trying to talk to some trees. The, the the overgrowth here is going to take many, many days to clear away with a lot of people, but you kind of, you can recognize the elements that had lain buried here for a long time, and that gives you a little bit of hope to kind of realize this can be done. It's an enormous amount of work, and then you kind of realize that two people sort of stake their reputation on this in some ways. Both Alexia believed utterly so much that she basically declared it to happen, which is not a normal thing to happen. And your mother had had learned of this grove and entrusted you to make it to the point where that seed, that seed you rescued can be can be planted here. A lot of weight on my shoulders. Uh, so I'm working like a workhorse. Like I took a break to go do that and I've been working at it since. Are we at the gate? With a speed that is halved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're feeling kind of exhausted as well. Clark well, would like to draw one of his hand axes. Okay. Bang its flat edge up against the metal door. Okay. Uh, you hear a loud, clanging, dull sound from the from the direction of the main gates. How's there? And a shouting. That'll do. I pick up my. The sound for you guys as you as you as you're outside. Almost feels like it gets swallowed up very quickly, as so though it barely reckon, barely uh, reverberates inside. Mm-hmm. For you, you kind of hear the sound uh, dull at a, at a distance, and then there's a very strange sensation as the sound gets repeated, but not an echo. As we hear a sort of distortion of it from over here, another distortion from over there, another distortion from is that from the tree? As you hear this sort of. As though it's trying to be replicated. Interesting. You also hear the trees and the vines and the overgrown weeds moving. I pick up my staff because I've been working, uh, and I go towards the door, um, and I'm keeping an eye on that. Okay. Swash. Yeah, what's up? You see Elzara kind of coming out of almost uh, darkness. I look like a hot mess. <laughs> Nothing unusual. <laughs> not sleeping oh. Not sleeping well. Probably have a few twigs in my hair. Um, it's the most dis- disheveled any of you have seen me. Can Other- we come in? Sure. Sure. So, Is everything okay? We'll There's breach. a small elf girl with them that we'll, you don't we'll, recognize. We'll breach the, the gate, but no further. Okay. <laughs> she walks out and like, <laughs> ah! Now, and you don't see her. <laughs> the small elf girl over there just, vanishes for a second. Just uh, we have out of the shadows, a little elf girl's head pops up. Elzara, Elzara, hello. Um, I'm going to assume, having seen him with a short person who had illusion magic on them, uh, I am going to say, stay where you are. I want an explanation. All right, do the thing again, that, please. That's, that's up to him. And him. We're inside. You hear the... But nothing bad happened. Trust the me. The grass moving, strangely. Like it's rustling all around you. No one else seems to notice. Give me a moment. I uh, cast Speak with Plants. I'm like, what's up? Okay. Um, there's a moment where the grass stops moving as it <laughs> didn't really expect to talk to anybody today, I guess. <laughs> Um, and it doesn't come back as sound, but a rippling of the grass and the trees around. And all of you are starting to notice when she turns away from you, seemingly crazy, talking to the grass. This is not something that some of you haven't seen before. Uh, But then in response, everything goes quiet for a second. And then the entire place starts to move. You hear a loud creaking sound as the gates behind you close shut and you can see a wave of grass and tree roots and limbs closing the gate and then growing over it the words you receive back in response are intruders die and i think that's where is, we'll is, stop, is, is this supposed to happen moment. <laughs> i'll ask alzara is this supposed to happen you're pretty sure this is not supposed to happen no. <sighs> you're also pretty sure this is not supposed to happen just because this is a lot of trees and grass. 
and weirdness. Why did you take me away from the library? Just, why? I, I, was, I was getting shit done. <laughs> we'll go a few more minutes just so I'll set the scene a little bit more. <laughs> uh, as you All hear... You in library is read. And uh, learn. And in fact, we'll overhead, see. it is though a thick cloud has formed <clears throat> as well, blotting out most of the light. It becomes very dim. You see the air start to thicken as uh, small amounts of dust motes start to fill the air and a loud creaking and cracking comes from well that large tree right there not far from the gates Uh yep as you see it start to sway as if under its own breeze and then one root juts up out of the ground and sits down again another root juts up out of the ground and sits down again and of all the people here Elzera has experienced and knows the sight of a treant, but this is still very menacing. From across the estate, you hear a similar sound of two more trees uprooting themselves and beginning to move. Mm-hmm. And a cat somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard the cat until you mentioned it. I was like right into this. What do you do? Well, um, right now the the speak with plants spell still active. Yeah, it is as though the entire space is screaming at you. No, you, I don't. I won't, I won't make you make a perception check because no, actually I will because you are make a straight perception check because you are still exhausted. Can you just tell them we're chill? Um, <laughs> straight check of the twenty six. <laughs> okay. Within the cacophony of sounds that are happening all around you, you hearing it as the expression of language, you hearing the, the, uh, the sound of all of this, uh, there is a very tiny voice, uh, probably the voice you would have expected to come out of, uh, what's this form's name? Oh, this one is Lala. The small little, uh, small little elf girl. Uh, is a very faint voice that says, help me. Then you look, look over and see the uh, the strange amulet that this little girl, you kind of thought the voice was coming from there for a moment, and recognize this amulet, at least one part of it, as you've seen it before, having this twisted druidic font on, on it. Okay. And where did the sound seem to come from? Somewhere amidst the cacophony. Okay. Hmm. And where, just for me, the gates are there, right? Yep. yep. Um, so You've roamed all around this place. You've seen yep. a little bit of it during the day. But right now it feels more like it's midnight. Okay. Is it darkness or just dim light? Dim light. Okay. You can see little shafts of light illuminating the 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 uh, plant matter and the little floating dust mites that seem to be going in the air. I've, I've been here for two weeks. Why now? Are you asking it? Yeah. Um, is it me? Hmm. I've been here tending to you, trying hmm. to bring you back to health. They just don't like help, my little girls here. <laughs> Not far from you, a couple of feet, uh, on one of the branches which has been kind of steadily growing out, you see the branch kind of shiver a little bit. And a very small little flower erupts from it. Pink in color, white on the inside. But it fades quickly. Been no strength. Sign it reacts to. Sign it reacts to? Sign. Sign? I have no strength. The voice seems to be getting fainter and fainter. So I have no strength, sign it reacts to. Sign it reacts to. What do you mean? What sign? We awake. Um. Make an insight check. Is that 
with disadvantage? Yes. Okay. So I rolled an 11 and a 12, so it's a 14. <laughs> okay. Something weird is happening here. Well, that was probably obvious. Uh, you you get the, the distinct impression that there are at least two entities here. Mm-hmm. One that's struggling. Yeah. Uh, one that's gone on to a sort of primitive reaction. Um, and now seems to be seems to be reacting to a stimulus, but not uh, not intelligent any longer. It's no longer re- reacting to the way you speak. The only thing that's reacting is that other voice. Okay. Reading between the lines a little bit, you also get the sense that that voice had been trying to speak to you, but it hadn't been strong enough until the rest was activated. Okay. And it's fading fast. And it's a sign, and the only thing that comes to mind for sign is their symbol. That would be the most direct one. That yeah. would be the most direct one. So I'm going to lunge at you and try to grab that symbol. Okay. Uh, and the symbol said, uh, what did it say again? Speak? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like uh, speak. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to lunge and try to grab the... Make a dexterity saving throw. Um, Unless you're willing to have her tackle you. Well... For no apparent reason. Um, sure, I... I get advantage on uh, checks to escape grapples. Is that to avoid as well, or just once they've grabbed me? I think that's once they've grabbed okay. you. So, and I'm not trying to grapple you. I'm trying to grab something from yeah. you. Um, it's it's more of an instinctual. Do yeah, but well, yeah, he try to keep it away. Sure. Um, Fourteen. Do I want okay. to make it a, a contested? Uh, contested with uh, acrobatics okay. or athletics. It doesn't really matter in this case. Remember their uh, disadvantage because you're well, exhausted. One. Okay. The other one was a three, so. Uh, you, you go to lurch forward, and a branch catches your foot and throws you off. off Give uh, me that elf. symbol. The, 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 the little elf girl says, shit, in Draconic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and I'll say in Draconic, give me that symbol. Why? What's what's going on? It's druidic. Here. Uh. <laughs> you take a look at it, and you realize it's not one symbol. It has four different faces on it, each one distinct each one a very different pattern, but one you recognize immediately as you turn it over in your hand. Mm-hmm. You recognize on the backside, opposite of where the druidic one was, mm-hmm. the symbol of Arvax. Oh, motherfucker. I see. Um, Is that a symbol I had recognized? No. Okay. What's this value to you? I grabbed it when I left. Uh, I smash it. Okay. How? Uh, ground. Stab it with my quarter staff. Okay. Um, make an attack roll. Which isn't at disadvantage. Uh, quarter staff. I want to say that that is a 23. 23. You smash it with the end of your quarter staff. It does not seem to break. Do I notice the symbol of our backs by any chance? Uh, well, when she throws it to the ground, it kind of stabs at it. I'll let you make a perception check at that point. Six. You don't know why, but she started st- stabbing the ground. After All right, lunging cool. at uh, the small elf girl. Is it evil? It had as a symbol of Harvax in it. I hear that right. Uh, when she says symbol of Harvax, yeah, you're definitely symbol of Harvax. Right. L- let me look at that. Uh, I will try to uh, before you even do any like reach it. Um, I I want this thing. Apparently, osera has been here a little too long, and she seems to be going crazy. Does it have any... Um, I am going to... Um... Uh, sorry, my thing... Um... Cast Call Lightning. Okay. Um, at third level. I think it's a... So we get blown away. So, <laughs> so you uh, you uh, raise your staff to the air, and mutter a few words. You see the the uh, the sort of indistinct clouds uh, that were forming overhead now turn into much larger, churning forms, and crack a thum! A lightning bolt strikes forward down on that space. Now that the grass around it is burned and torn. There's a little bit of, of one of the twigs is lit on fire that's around it. And 
the thong that was holding the amulet onto uh, the the neck of the young girl is burned away. The young girl's always going, son of. Uh, the amulet remains. Draconic. Is it still? It seems unaffected. Is this Arbach's magic causing this reaction yes. in the grove? And you can now hear the the grove kind of closing in a bit. This spell magic level six on the amulet. Thoom, 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 and you hear and see a tree walking towards you. And I'll dispel the, magic level six on the amulet. That'll be your first action of the next game. God damn it. <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that. Okay. And so, because uh, I want to kind of tie it up together. And there we are. We have uh, introduced a new party member. Right. This strange little, uh, littler than little, I think, uh, Cobalt. <laughs> Uh, as well as uh, there seems to be some some movement going forward. But what is this amulet? What's going on with the grave? <coughs> we'll find this out in recording time. It'll be two weeks. Uh, if you're watching these uh, just in order, then it may be in like 10 seconds since the last episode, and you really can't tell these sort of things. As a person who binges just about everything, uh, it's always weird when people apologize for missing time, because I didn't miss any time at all. But... Uh, however, uh, I want to thank all of my players for playing tonight. I think you guys brought your A-games, which I appreciate. And uh, we will be back in December. We're looking at possibly doing a long episode sometime late December, so hold on to your hats. We'll probably split that into two episodes once more. For now, however, we need to tell them some of the ways that if, if people are enjoying this, they can let us know about that. How about that from you, Marie, first? Uh, like us on Facebook, Legend of the Drowned Isles. It is a Facebook page. And then we have the group uh, that is just uh, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Uh, you can find it through the Facebook page. Both places do different things. The page, we just post the newest episodes, any updates on if we're filming or not. Uh, and then the group, we talk. We talk about what happened. We talk about ideas, plot theories. Mark doesn't really do much there. I'm too busy to do anything in there. <laughs> Uh, plus, I don't want to spoil the beans. Kitten posted soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we post some pictures. That's where I posted way back because I've had my chibis done for a while. I posted those uh, in there a while back. Um, some other stuff, uh, the pictures that we got of mine and Nax's cosplay. Um, all that fun stuff. So you can find that in the group. And I'll be adding another chibi pic. I didn't put it in yet, so mm -hmm. there is a chibi pic already done of Kuzumaya. What? Uh, oh, that's adorable. Which is quite Aww. adorable. Uh, <laughs> but do expect a nice knife flying your way. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Jody, what can people uh, do if they really enjoy the video? If you find us on YouTube, which you probably watch us from here, please like and subscribe to Mark's channel and ring the bell so you know when the next video comes. And we hope that you'll share it with anybody else who might find it interesting. This is a work in progress. Every time we do this, it changes. Uh, and it will change again probably next time as well. Possibly even getting into streaming. We're going to try that, see if we get more take hardware two. involved. Take, <laughs> take five, I think, at this point. <laughs> um, I want to thank, again, all of my players. Sorry if I'm looking away from the others. I just realized. Uh, there we go. Are I have to press anyway. buttons. But uh, thank you again, guys, for playing. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Or instantly. The internet is wonderful. Who knows?